Hello. I don't know if it's working. This is my first time doing it as the technical director. It looks like it is. I'm gonna turn sound on the stream. Do I hear? It, it looks. Like Yay! You can hear us. Yeah, you can oh. hear us. We're good. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. Hello and welcome to Thembos and Dragons. I am Izzy, and I will be playing the game, clicking along to it. We will be doing our own voices. Yeah. What? Yay. Um, <laughs> uh, this game does have, from what I can tell, wonderful voice acting in it, but to make it more interactive, we will be joining in and doing our own voices. We'll see how this goes. Um, we apologize ahead of time if we assume anyone's too pompous or other voices. Uh, please don't kill the messenger. Um, is there anything we want to do before we start, Mackie? can think of. No? Alright. No. It's been a long time since I streamed a game. Okay, so let's see. We went into the preferences. We turned off the voice so we can read it out loud and interact with it. Uh, got some nice credits here. Ooh, they, they wrote scroll past. Cool. Unsee. <laughs> and then, yeah, I guess we'll just begin. I like the logo. The logo is really nice. The art is also ominous and kind of spooky. I'm not sure what we're getting into. Excellent. I think we might get a curse of wolf skin. That, that is in the title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very observant. Uh, start. Who's going to do this? Am I doing this? Yeah, go for it. I am lost. Pray. I No, pray that I shall find my path. Pray that I shall not lose heart. Pray that I see for who I am. This, the only wish I have. Before I've wronged, so far gone. Nope. I'm doing it awful to start. <laughs> Act one. All oh, Hollow's Eve. Oh, I missed the last part. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Sanctuary. Sanctuary. Are you doing this? Okay, I'll be Ilona. Okay, you be the main character. I mean, I get a lot of dialogue. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we should think about, or think of finding shelter soon before it gets too dark. Am I doing the narration? Yeah, you're the narrator. Oh. If I'm the main character, you're oh, the narrator. Oh no. <laughs> I is that Ilona? I'm assuming it's Ilona. But Ilona? I, I, Iona? I, oh no. I, I would go with Ilona. Ilona, Ilona waits yeah. for Edwin to turn back into a human. Okay, okay. So we already know that there is a wolf, uh, there was a werewolf involved. Closing her eyes to rest for a moment, there's only the sound of the forest until Edwin speaks to break their silence. Ooh. Oh, okay. Hello, tall person. Are you Edwin? Um... I guess. <laughs> let's see, let's see. I know that I'm asking for too much, but despite everything that's happened, would you please stay with me? Oh, is this going to get spicy? <laughs> Are I we going to have to be spicy together? Get my big burly wolf boyfriend. <laughs> what? Edwin, please calm down. No spicy. Ilona, is it, was it Ilona? <laughs> did we decide that that's what we're doing? I, Ilona, which one did we decide? I, I, Ilona. Ilona. Ilona, I, I can't. Not in a situation like this. I feel like I'm going way too spicy. <laughs> You're right, but I need you to slow down. I can't keep up with you, and that is only going to make us look all the more suspicious. Okay, maybe less spicy. He's got the zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna. No, that's not fair. <laughs> I really like the art. The backgrounds are really nice. Yeah, the colors are good. Yeah. We only have each other to rely on. As so she stop getting the zoomies. It's midnight. <laughs> As she says this, she places her hands over his. His hands are abnormally cold to the touch. Oh, does he have poor blood circulation? I guess Me maybe too. that's a werewolf thing. Me too, buddy. Me too. 
<laughs> learned this was a sign of his transformation. Okay, that I actually all I had to do was keep reading, and that would have explained the whole thing to me. So this is on me. Even so, she must remain with him. The moonlight beams over them, slightly wavering with each wavering. Yes, wavering with each breath they take. Okay, now it's getting back into spicy. If only the moonlight would never leave us. We should rest here for a while. Ooh, the music change. Yeah. Edwin. Dot dot dot. Ed. Yes, I'm here. Please forgive my wandering mind. What could I ever do without you? I feel like I've never thanked you for. You have thanked me more than enough already, Edwin. I appreciate it. Their eyes flicker for a moment and he's not shivering anymore. Why do I feel like this involves a... Okay, no t-shirts being removed. We're good. Eventually, they press on. They sight a lonely settlement on the settlement on the settlement. No, they sight a lonely <laughs> settlement on the horizon. Stone walls surround its perimeter. Okay. There's nothing. There's nothing spicy. I just gave you good ear scratches. <laughs> I like the trees. The trees look really cool. Yeah, the backgrounds are real good. Nice colors. Oh, does it not? Hold on. Let me fix this so it looks better on the. Um, I didn't realize it wasn't fully visible. Uh... Oh, it's cut off. I didn't notice either. Oops, yeah. Sorry. Why is it... Oh, no. Where's our technical editor person when we need them? Why is it doing that? I don't know. It's like it keeps... Is it because we're not... I'm not in full screen? Let me check if oh, that's... Maybe. Did that fix it at all? Mm, nope. That actually might have made it worse. Oh. Window. Okay, let's try maybe... Nope, that will... I want... Let's save before I break anything. Um... <laughs> oh, hold alt and drag to make it better. Sid says. Hold alt and drag. Oh, 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 it's almost like you know what you're doing because you're our technical director. <laughs> you have power. You have arrived. All right, now it should be better. I am so sorry for the lack of professionalism on my part right now. Uh, oh, I think that's now better. Let me look at the stream. It might be cut off a tiny bit on the sides, but it's definitely better than it was. Oh yeah, she's still cut off on the top too. Okay, so maybe the alt over there. There. I think that should think work. It, yeah, I think. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, let's go back into it. Eventually, they press on. They sight a lonely settlement on the horizon. Stone walls surround its perimeter. Okay, no. Hmm. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't felt like myself lately since the incident back at the. Is that prior? Priory? Priory, yeah. Priory. Try as I may to blend in to do no try as I may to blend in to do good and keep myself in check I am a beast through and through maybe I'm reading these too spicy <laughs> what is it we've done so wrong is us being together nope okay it is spicy is us being together is this okay is us being together something so heinous is my existence such a sin I can relate now you dot, dot, to dot. perfect <laughs> I did not know the extent of the hatred that lay within their souls until that night. To go as far as to burn me alive. Oh, interesting. Spicy and seasoned. 
Is there something wrong with me? I I I oh, I can't you even can learn my girlfriend's th name. <laughs> Twin, just call me ill. It's fine. <laughs> I'm always oh, no? on edge. Nah. Fearing for our lives. I never meant to put you through this. You know what I should have done? I should have played just a tiny bit of the game to get to the part where they say their name. Just so I could know how to pronounce it. Because instead I look like a douche. Anyways. Just, like, just call her Lona. It's Lo a nickname. Alright, Lona is Lona. the nickname. If you want my answer, as a former nun, you and I have sinned. Ooh. Wow. She's direct. You said that you were a beast through and through. You're not. You're... Just a yeah. dog who goes to zoomies at midnight. Edwin immediately <laughs> releases her hand, intertwined seconds ago, but now balled into a fist. Okay, so is this about, is shit about to go down? The rustling of dry leaves brings with it a heavy and heavily armed guard and, and an archer wearing a cloak. Okay, cool. All right, who's doing the... Right, you hey. have the narrative. It's enough <laughs> loitering around the town wall looking suspicious, don't you think? Don't you think? Yeah. Don't it's... you think? <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Okay, it's someone important. I've been observing your movements from the battlements for a while now. Be great to fill up the town map. Did I lose? Just to have a meeting with okay. you, or else I would have already pierced your arrows. Did you? No. I lost the stream. Okay. <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Maybe I, maybe I can't play this dream at the same time. I, I pause it. Ilona. Okay, I see it now. I looked. I looked at the audience. We're good. Ilona. Ilona. But we... May we ask to what purpose do we owe this pleasure? Are Sister. you doing this one or did you want me to do this one? <laughs> I got her. Okay. All I know is that the master called you. I said it to none and a man outside the town walls and informed him of this. No, no. Okay, well, I mean, if you are a nun and a, a man walking around, it's, I guess it's pretty easy to be yeah. spotted. I can tell your legs are shaking, even from here. So make sure to comply <laughs> obediently, and I won't ask I any like difficult questions about you in return. The yeah, like really that's really nice. Yeah. I even like, like, there's... There's not a lot of detail done into that, but it feels like there's a lot of detail in there. I really like it. I'll put the, uh, in the... I don't mm -hmm. know if you can see my cursor, the, the stars. In the, in the sky there, yeah. Yeah. I can see your cursor. She Edward, simply wake asked up. what business the master has with us. You're acting very feisty for someone who didn't even have the decency to introduce herself. Fair enough. Yeah. I accidentally clicked away. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Anari. Happy now? Yes, you've introduced yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to probe you or anything. Now this is getting a little more spicy than I expected. <laughs> you may be outsiders, but you look like decent enough folk. No need to come up with any grand excuses for why you're here. So let's get back to it. Will you accept the town master's call? Yeah, now you gotta I talk suppose, to yourself. Enjoy. I suppose that choice is truly... It's not truly much of one. I accept. Oh, hello, cat. <laughs> a wise judgment. You're clever for a nun. But you should learn to keep your dog in line. What? I tried. But I ran out of Scooby Snacks. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, I do not sneak Scooby Snacks into your <laughs> dinner. Ignore that comment. I don't appreciate being called feisty. <laughs> I meant no offense when I said that. My Really? It was a compliment? I Well then, that's carry fair. on. It could, yeah, like, it could be a compliment. <laughs> so you do have manners. It would do you... You will, to keep them. Let's get moving, then. I'll escort you to the... That makes pants. sense. I'll, I'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be good. Pave yourself, dog. Woof. Wag your tail. And Harry takes the position of rear guard as the other guards lead the way forward. I really... Even even these, the simplistic, but, like, very... I like it a lot. 
Yeah. You the even see the sun. Like it, it seems like the sun's probably rising a bit in the back there. That's really cool. The trees. Neat. It's pretty. Okay, going back to the the thing. Ilona. Got it. Ilona <laughs> glances back just once. Anari's bow by her side and her hand rests on the quiver, ready to fire if the two of them even thought of escaping. Ilona can't help but wonder just how much of their conversation Inari overheard. Her arrival seemed too well-timed. Did they give away too much, even when they thought they were alone? She glances at Edwin, his face inscrutable? Yes. And so yeah. they enter the gates. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. Did they hear me saying he had the zoomies? <laughs> Are we also adding abridged lines to this? <laughs> When was the last time I felt any hope? Anything besides pain? Ooh. Now you're being dark and... Okay. The swelling Darker. in my chest is excruciating. Okay. I truly wouldn't have made it this far on my own, even if I hide what I am. Well, people can't help but to be suspicious. Although... It's probably the eye patch. <laughs> it probably is the eye patch! <laughs> Although... A town full of people trying to kill me is yet a quite is yet is kill me yet is quite an improvement. The town is oh wow I'm just gonna keep going. The town is bustling <laughs> despite not being very loud 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 large. A clock tower stands over the plaza. There's a large bonfire in the square and there are carved turnips. Ooh, carved turnips. Ooh, that must be a religious thing that I don't know about. At the doors of all the houses. Okay, is it hey, Halloween? What decorations are these? <laughs> is it Halloween here? <laughs> yes. It's for all. Ho Why did wasn't? Oh no, it must have been in your thought. Okay, it's for All Hallows Eve, a celebration to commemorate the dead. Okay. See, why are the townsfolk celebrating in joy then? You were raised strictly, Helona. Father Ivanov? I Ivanov? Never wanted you yeah. to know about these pagan festivals. Okay, so are we in, like, us? How would I do this? Oh, no. That's just... <laughs> Am I doing this one? Sure. I don't like to assume... Come on. Old man. Cool. Young lad, please watch your step. One mistake in this weary old man is done for. I'm so sorry for bumping into you, sir. Same age. Ah, okay. So they were, this is another, I think it was 45, I think I read. So I don't have to do old man voice. We're good. I don't have to <laughs> risk any cats trying to attack me. Excellent. That's always this good. one. This one me. Fancy meeting you, you here, Inari. I didn't. I didn't know you liked to take strolls. I never knew you had friends either. And who may you be, dear sister? Ah, uh, uh, that was me. I expected the sister to. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure too. we're friends. Pleased to make your acquaintance, anyhow. I'm Kalik. Inari and I go way back. That we do, and I regret it. It seems like they just probably grew up in the same city. Yeah, they Maybe. don't get along. You've just got to love that personality. Don't take her too seriously. She's always been like that. I see. I'm Edwin. Pleased to make your acquaintance. As am I. My name is Alona. Forgive my ignorance, but are you the master of this town? Me? Sorry. But no. I'm just the physician and, and herbalist. Did the master summon you? He did, but I don't know what business we have with him. <laughs> I should have expected as much. Inari has a habit of leaving out the details and jumping straight to the point. I should get going, but we're bound to see each other again soon. Keep well, Inari. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh god, I gotta keep going. Anari, I'm gonna have to need wa okay water. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna need water. Anari only <laughs> Anari only nods curtly. The and the group moves along further into the town. They find a large house made of timber and stone. I like the little details. Ooh, ooh, ooh! This background. How do I get the background? I just want the background. Look at the pretty details on the castle. You can't... Yeah, it's really nice. And then the mountains, and then more of the stars. Wow, so pretty. The trees changed colors too here a little bit, but like, wow. Gorgeous. Thanks. Anari knocks on the door. It is answered by a man and a woman in fine clothing. They step outside the house. Well, I guess we're getting two new characters here. <laughs> so, Sir Olden, Lady Salome, I have brought you Sister Ilona and her companion Edwin. I'll, I'll be... I'll be Olden and you can be Salome. Oh God. <laughs> all right. So the man with her. So the man was with her after all. I'm just trying to figure out, like, are, am I? Am are you sure? Like, am I doing this one? I'll do Olden. You, you can do Salome. Okay. At first, I thought a holy woman was being accosted by some blackguard, to think he was her traveling companion. I understand it may not have had the friendliest of appearance, but I have sworn to protect Sister Alona from harm. This is indeed unexpected. Anari's eyes are keen, but perhaps only for hunting her quarry. True, there's no need to understand the conversations of beasts to hunt them, only their behaviors. Judging by Anari's report, I would have had I would have thought she was describing a saint. Thank you for your kind words. They are far too gracious to be wasted on me. I have not done anything to be deserving of such praise. Wow. Take a compliment I to say thought thank you. you. <laughs> That's the first thing you have to learn is just say thank you. I thought you might be able to join us for tonight's feast for All Hallows' Eve, and perhaps to lead us in prayer. It's not every day that you see a nun, and much less than such unlikely company. So, would you accept our invitation? Ilona mm. considers this carefully. She and Edwin had drawn too much attention already, so it surprises her when Edwin speaks out without any fear. Like, I think they both don't want to be- no one wants to be here in this moment. <laughs> Absolutely no one wants to be here. We will gladly accept. I'm liking this voice for them. I know it's not good, but I'm liking this voice for them. <laughs> Tonight's banquet will begin shortly, but you should have time to prepare for it. Anari, let us debrief in the meantime. And look at this! Look at the details here! How cozy. It's very warm. I like the light. The light is nice. And the cheese, it glows. Glowing cheese. It had only been a few Radio days since they were cheese. on the run. <laughs> I don't think... Meh, maybe. It had only been a few days since they were on the run. Il Il oh, Ilona could only scarcely believe that they were welcome so readily. They sit at a table laden with food. A rich colored beetroot soup. Mulled with swine, wines and spices. What? Yeah, mine, wines and, with spices. I need to slow down. Pickled vegetables... A glistening whole roasted pheasant and even more dishes than one could name. Of cheese. Ooh, more people. Oh, and there's adorable person with glasses. Are you there's taking, the glasses character. Are you taking glasses character? Yeah, you can have the other one. Nope. Uh, Ulden plans to rebuild the ruined chapel in Belarov as Salome is deeply pious. This is why, what was it, Salome? 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 Salome. Salome regards the meeting with um, Ilona as such good fortune. And now they're all gathered at a table. Why does it feel like someone here is going to betray someone? Because all of them are looking directly at her. Someone's uh -oh. about to get stabbed. <laughs> I feel stared at. Oh no. I'm going to hide under the table now. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> everyone gathers them, lead them in prayer before the meal. That's why they're all staring. Oh she, right. <laughs> she's yeah. They're not staring because she's about to get stabbed. It's because she has to lead. She's a nun. I get it. Yeah. She speaks a few words of gratitude for the harvest and for peace and protection. When she lifts her eyes once again, 
Thanks for the grub. Oh my god. I highly doubt. You know what? Yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe. <laughs> is this one me? Yeah. The food Kellek smells. Is the, was it the guy on the, ah, the, guy on the right the food there? Smells amazing. Was the pheasant? Was that the pheasant you caught today, Anari? No, it was <laughs> the one I caught five weeks ago. And I made it a specifically for you. <laughs> a successful hunt and a high quality spices can even put someone someone like me in a very good mood. You should always be in a good mood, then. <laughs> Fleur, would you like some spiced pheasant? Is this one me? Yeah, you're, you're Fleur now. Do I go California? No, I don't think that's fair. <laughs> Valley girl. This is the young. This is the youngest one, right? I think no, maybe I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. Where does this one go? Oh no! Thank you, Antonari. You, no, I don't know where this is. You always make it way too spicy. <laughs> too bad. I guess you really do. Don't take after Olden when it comes to food. So, what brings you to Belarov, Mr. Edwin and Sister Ilona? Our town may not look like much after our chapel was ransacked and destroyed, but it was once breathtaking. It still is. It still looks gorgeous. <laughs> Where? Pilgrimage. We were just seeking shelter before dark, and then your guard accosted us and told us we have to come in here immediately. So really, you brought us here. <laughs> but thanks for asking. There's... Those lines aren't there. It's in her head. I heard about the destruction of a chapel some time ago. No idea it was here. I just had the zoomies. Yes, it was the barbarians doing. Even now, we're still rebuilding the town. But the faithful have moved on from here. I miss having someone to share my connection with God. So I am sorry to impose my sudden invitation on you. Belarov is home to people of many faiths. Many of us have traveled from afar like myself. From what I understand, Edwin was also quite the traveler before we met. Yes, my zoomies kept me up all night. You ran around a lot. Do you have any stories, Edwin? I'd love to hear them. This yes. is so unfair. <laughs> to tell you everything that happened would tax my wits. My, I like, I, I, I like my coffee the same way as my soul, dark and brooding. I really like dark coffee. It's true. <laughs> Have you seen any mythical creatures on your journey? That's so unfair. Ever met the fair folks? I've always dreamed of finding one. Let me think. There was this one time I had an encounter with a giant. This sounds like a story that's gonna. Edwin, oh, I wanted to hear the story. <laughs> Edwin reg regales the table with his tale of encountering a giant when he was atop a mountain. Fleur and and Salome listen with rapture. Rapturous, isn't that isn't that a bad thing? I'm Attention. Even okay. Kalik oh, takes okay. interest in these tales and starts telling a tale of his own travels. He loses track of time and decides that it's getting late and he needs to head in early. Anari leaves to get some... You left me with the narration in this. <laughs> I'll do... If we play another game, we'll do the narration in that. <laughs> <laughs> Anari leaves to get some rest from her shift as the town guard. Both of them bid everyone at the table a good night. Or we can switch partway through if you want. Every background is so well done. Yeah, the backgrounds are really nice. Even Kudu though the party thins out a little... Fleur seems excitable when she begin. Even, oh god. Esley? As, hmm. It might just be Ashley. Is it Ashley? Okay. I'm not sure. Who kept to, let's go and see if the chat has any. I see. I okay. Isley. Okay. Okay. Isley. Who kept to herself as she ate, joins in on the conversation. Okay. You really traveled a long way if you came across the sea, Edwin. Now I'm wondering, how did you meet Sister Alona? 
Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that story for another time. I'm pretty tired. I was also tired during that story. <laughs> Ilona is like staring directly at the camera right now. I'm like, oh god. What is happening? Why do is he not tell, tell that, that story? story? I don't know what the story <laughs> is, but story. do not tell that story. And oh, I know. could it be? The story of how you is even she is the story of how you met Ilona not suitable for my ears? <laughs> is that it? You might be onto something, Blair. Dot dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> Children. Girls these Stay days are sharp. <laughs> oh no, they caught on to our sex capades. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not it at all. It's it's not that interesting compared to my other stories. So here's another story. One time when I had zoomies. <laughs> I was under the impression that you two shared a forbidden romance. Perhaps the strange forces that wander tonight will tip the scales at last. I don't know what that accent is. <laughs> Fleur, you shouldn't tease guests and you really shouldn't encourage her at uh, uh, Isley mother it's all hollows eves tricks and pranks are part of the fun I'm merely teaching sister Alona about this part of the festival she shouldn't be so serious and uptight all the time so many people on well, the screen well they said they were on a pilgrimage if their sins are meant to be forgiven in the end they should be able to sin along the way all they want wow buddy this is spicy. <laughs> I, I'm so embarrassed right now. She's gonna hide under the table again. <laughs> I don't know what that noise is. <laughs> um. Oh God, what, what, what voice is this? Um, Mom voice. <laughs> not you too, dear. You must have had too much to drink. Salome gives one stern glance to both Fleur and Olden, and their boisterous laughter subsides. Olden seems pleased with his comment. When he recalls the looks on um, Ilona and Edwin's face, he tries not to burst out laughing again. I apologize, Mother, and I apologize to you as well, Edwin and Sister Ilona, for insinuating something I should not have, though it was very clear that that's what was happening. <laughs> Ilona and Edwin sheepishly mumble... Thank you, Shelby, for joining in with sound effects of your mouse toy. Ilona and Edwin <laughs> sheepishly mumble under their acceptance under Fleur's apology. There is too much attention on them. Oh my god, okay. Did you want me to take the narration? Oh. Salome asks everyone their preferences for tea so she can make preparations and excuses herself. A brief moment. I like how they all leave. That's pretty cool. A brief moment later, Fleur rises from her seat. She helps Salome pr to prepare the tea, truly apologetic about her earlier behavior. We've arranged separate sleeping quarters for the both of you. Please don't take our jests seriously. I mean, unless you want to share a room. That's I mean, fine, too. I think we're pretty used to that. We share outside all the time. You've been most gracious to offer us both this feast and shelter for the night. Thank you again for your hospitality. Oh, no need. But if you must insist, you're welcome. Please, I know this is all too much for you and Sister Ilona. You've met quite a few people already, and it's getting late. If you need to retire for the evening, you are welcome to. I'm only like 25. <laughs> I don't know, it took, <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> Salome and Fleur have the tea ready and Isley helps serve it to the guests and places servings of milk and sugar at each end of the table. Olden remarks that this is one of his favorite teas. Indeed, the pheasant aroma of the pleasant? Wow! Pleasant aroma of black tea is refreshing and the awkwardness from, any, from the conversation before is soon forgotten. Though, I must admit, I remain curious as to how the two of you met each other. Are you religious, Edwin? Only on weekends. As much as any other man, our meeting, well, Alona pulled me out from a dark place. We bonded over the stories and poems she was recording. How do you record poems? Do they have recording? Write, write it down. I know, but I'm just being a douche. <laughs> I did not want to let her travel alone, so I decided to act as her god on, guard on this. Her god? Woo! That would have been bad. Her guard on this journey. 
I see. Having a companion to talk about the same text? That's not so different from me and Isley. Well, magical texts, books about <laughs> curses and spells rather than stories and poems. Oh, that's unusual. Both of you practice magic? What if you like that's a bad thing? It's a useful resource, but difficult to master. You did say that the two of you are on a pilgrimage, so you might not be aware of recent events. There have been sightings <laughs> of a werewolf in another town. Oh fuck, I shouldn't have told them about my zoomies. <laughs> Shh, quiet, Edwin. No. <laughs> Those foul beasts. A werewolf truly must be cursed to succumb to their bloodlust. An oppressive silence lingers and the sweat beads down Edwin's forehead. Elona tries to keep a straight face, but her brow twitches. Sorry, reflex. <laughs> Edwin adds more sugar to his tea. I just picture him like, sugar, <laughs> scooping, sugar, sugar, sugar. 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 <laughs> it's not going to help with your zoomies, Edwin. He takes care to not rattle the crockery? Okay. As he stirs it with the spoon. Please pay no heed to my language. It's it's just... Belarov was once an old fortress, so we don't have to worry about monster attacks. But in my youth, I experienced an attack firsthand. Here's my dramatic backstory, children I just met. <laughs> That's all the line says. <laughs> A werewolf attack the tent in the dead of night, but Old One fended it off with fire magic. His subordinate was torn to pieces, and Old One's brother had his legs nearly hewn off. Nom nom. If it were not, were not for my study of magic, who could say what might have happened? Oh shit, I remember that night, even though I'm only 25. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Edwin, are you okay? You look awfully pale. <laughs> I apologize. I might have gone too far with the, you know, gory details of my subordinate being torn asunder before my very eyes. Yes, I often start him? conversations with talking about things getting ripped off of legs and so on. Ah, uh, do you need any assistance? No. Thank you, Alona. And yes, Fleur, I think I may have to rest the further day. Please excuse me. My mind... My mind's in a dark place. My mind's been all over the place. Edwin, I know the tea was black, but it's not quite the same. <laughs> I should be back in full spirits by tomorrow. It's this night. The night that this happened. Isley, if you may, show him to his room, please. Of course! Ooh, even the door looks cool. <laughs> it's a nice door. Isley unlocks the door by the stairs and opens the guest room. She gives Edwin the key. Having separate sleeping quarters is more than Edwin could normally ask for. In this style of house, he had assumed that the guests share one larger sleeping space. He was prepared to run out of the manse and to be alone in the darkness of the night. My favorite, my favorite just, thing. Just, just, just run outside with your pants on, okay? <laughs> Instead, he has to play the role of an honored house guest. I usually sleep outside. This is weird to me. I sleep Is it out. nice? Like, <laughs> don't you get dirt in your hair? <laughs> I, I sleep out and leaves him with only a few words of comfort, which was, don't you get dirt in your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Hoping that he will feel better with rest. He nods and closes the door, locking it with a key. The unexpected privacy begins to help him ease his mind, and feeling his skin cool, he wipes the sweat from his brow. The chatter of the party is distant and he has to strain his ears to listen. Now, he is alone. Good, I can do the zoomies in here. <laughs> zoomies. Edwin towering frame. It is towering. He's like at least a foot taller than everyone else so far, at least. He is very tall. Edwin's towering frame lowers to the ground and the floorboards creak slightly with his movement. He kneels down by the bed as though praying. It's only if he na only now remembers how remembers how to breathe. Lord, please have mercy on my soul. These zoomies. I added way too much sugar to this tea. 
<laughs> I want to believe that I'm human, but the people won't accept me all the same. Am I allowed to surrender at last? If I were to end it right here and right now, wouldn't that be spectacular? <laughs> I don't know if it's like a <laughs> or <laughs> or <laughs> <laughs> uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, a husk of myself. Not even courage remains. I think if you laugh that vigorously, they'll hear you through the wall. Pathetic. I should be better than this. Stronger than this. What was the point of going through the trials of the military otherwise? I've been through worse. <laughs> Jeez, don't get let this guy get a sugar high. That day, I was brave, wasn't I? I did save my sister from the werewolf attack, didn't I? And then his legs were hewn. But did I really do it for her, or did my thirst for blood take over? <laughs> oh, look at this blood. <laughs> a whiff of blood, and I'm running towards it. It's these damn zoomies! <laughs> they can never stop. And he won't leave me alone since then. The lord of the forest, he calls himself. Penetrating mm, my dreams ever since that day. And granting me the curse of the wolfskin. Oh, they said the title! The wolfskin, a sash of wolf pelt that sits on my waist with intricate designs foreign to this land, or to any land for that matter. <laughs> the gold glistens with the red. Oh god, I'm gonna need so much water. Well, the red reflects the sheen of madness that rests within. Only the insane, insane ones are bestowed with this torment, like I. What am I doing? Did I <laughs> Did I change accents? <laughs> oh, he was a California boy all along. Alona told me once to hold on to hope. What's done is done. But today was a disaster. How could I lose my composure? I was practically dripping with sweat. I feel like I could say that more essentially. I was practically dripping with sweat. I know for a fact that Olden must have noticed that. Sooner or later, I'm a dead man. And I will bring Ilona down with me. Ah, I should probably save over here. I might be dumb. I might be a bad idea to save. Yes. <laughs> Ilona, my my darling. I'm I'm in the room next to you. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's banging on the wall. Stop laughing, Edwin. I wish I could to say. Sleep. <laughs> I wish I could say these words to your face. I'm trying to sleep in here. <laughs> What a fool I am for having kept my affection a secret from you. I know now. I can hear you. <laughs> Your window's open. <laughs> because now. Now I don't think I'll get another chance to say what I want to say. I can feel the hysteria building up within me. Oh, God, I'm giving myself tears. <laughs> expanding really, like it's never before. Rising so far. Mm, what is expanding? But I Only suffering. <laughs> I promise you this, Alona. I am not going to hurt you. I am going to do right by you. I am not going to hurt anyone who's innocent. It may seem the other way around, but whatever I do, I will have a damned good reason for doing it. Dramatic stare at the screen. Oh. Okay, Edwin, I believe you. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, you take up okay, for a okay. bit. Ilona stayed after Edwin's exit to ask Uldin and Isley about the nature of curses, but the conversation that followed was dense and difficult. By that point, Fleur took her leave, no longer interested in the dry and tiring conversation at hand. Ilona tried her best to keep up. Olden tried to challenge her with theories that needed to be formed on the spot, and at times it turned into a messy debate. Ooh. This one looks like a different style almost. Yeah. It's very nice though. Yeah. The rest of the party retired to bed before midnight. When Salome entered, she became the mediator of peace, and that was when everyone agreed to call it a night, departing from the main hall on friendly terms. These terms Salome. are friendly. 
I don't believe you. I am not friendly at all. Look at my expression. We're not even looking in the same direction. I mean, Elona's looking at the camera. <laughs> Salome, I should have rather... Elona is always looking at the camera. She is. She's aware. She's she, self-aware. She knows. Yeah, she knows. I'm in a visual novel. <laughs> Salome ushered her rather That almost came out of my bed. nose. <laughs> my apologies. Isley showed Ilona to the room that was prepared for her, and they bid each other good night. Good night, Olden. Your magic theories suck. <laughs> That's their good terms. Ilona <laughs> uh. opens the door and wonders for a moment if she wants to lock it. Her head is swimming, either from the spiced wine or the meandering conversation. Is it my turn for a soliloquy in my bedroom? Yep, here we go. Ed, I wonder how he's doing. That conversation earlier really took a turn Wait, for the worse for him. Can you hear me? Can... <laughs> yes, I can hear you. I can tell you're not doing so good. <laughs> the room is on the right side of hers, and Kellex is on the left. Oh. Oh, okay, so they were just the listening. So we her. know that she and heard the room. whole... Yeah. <laughs> oh, but here's nothing from the other side. I guess he was Aww. laughing. He's like, he was like... <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he, he was like when you have uh, someone trying to do voice acting, but they know that their parents can hear them, so they're trying to be really quiet. <laughs> so they're trying to do it. Yeah. yeah. Not a sound. He's probably asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yep, that's him in his sleep. That's <laughs> just his sleepy. He must be having a dream about murdering citizens again. <laughs> oh, that, Ed. He's so dreamy. I should get some rest, too, so we can both leave early tomorrow. The people here are kind, but there's too much risk if we stay. We have to keep moving. I need she another thinks bottle of going of water. to see him. To maybe knock on his door and check up on him. Okay, I got another bottle of water. Good plan. However, in the end, she decides not to. Lona can only trust him to be cautious. She could not continue to worry about him. It would make her restless. Does she also have the zoomies? Yes. I also put a lot of sugar The in more I spend time with him, I have the zoomies too. They're contagious, aren't they? I asked the shaman at a random town and they told me they were. <laughs> Lona wonders if she should leave her door unlocked in case he wants to speak to her. Is that Are we gonna get a, all right? Are we going to get a choice? <gasps> It seems risky, but Alona is more than used to sleeping in a communal space in the Priory. Having a private room feels like an excessive luxury. Though, there are strangers in the house, and some of them are men. Edwin would have wanted her door locked. I really hope she, she didn't lock the door. The door. And turns the I wanted to have a very keyhole, important conversation with her. Hearing a reassuring click. <laughs> <laughs> What was that, Edwin? I can't hear you through the wall. <laughs> After a silent prayer, dear God, protect my crazy boyfriend. She climbs into bed. Lying there, she feels a sense of unease and restlessness and also feels strangely awake. That rest and eases the <laughs> again from the other room. <laughs> yeah. You're right, <laughs> Unity. If we didn't lock the door, we would have got another lecture about magic theory. Oh, it closes her eyes and tries to drift into sleep. Within the peaceful silence of the man's rest comes to her easier than expected. I sleep. We change the chapters. The piercing sound of a howl wakes Kellick first, followed shortly by a woman's loud scream. <gasps> His door opens with a slam, sensing something is incredibly wrong. Ilona hears footsteps rush past her room, and her eyes flutter open, open, registering what woke her. She puts on her habit, covering her head, and hurries out the door. Kellick stops on the stairwell when he sees her, turning his head back to see Ilona. Ilona? Yeah. Edwin is not with him. She looks to the door next to hers, on the right, the one where she heard the laughter. Is this door open? You're that, Kelly. I'm Kelly? Right. There's no time to lose. <laughs> See if you can wake him. I'm, n I'm going on ahead. He runs up the stairs. For a man who always seems so weary, there's a... Oh, God. Vivacity? Vivacity. In his yeah, face now. Right. <laughs> that danger is present. 
This this game is making me learn to pronounce things. <laughs> Ilona knocks on Edwin's door, listening for any sign of life in the room. <laughs> Edwin, it's Ilona. Open the door. Silence. Okay, so maybe it's just. She knocks Edwin. again. <laughs> this time. Edwin. Her... Edwin. Is that you outside? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I would have come with you. <laughs> Oh, you locked your door? Why would you do that? <gasps> he locked his door? If anyone I... should have kept it open. <laughs> oh, there's women in this house locked his door. She same, turns same the handle. Her. The door is locked and there is no reply. Please, no. Lona <laughs> feels her heart lurch. She stumbles up the stairs, finding Kellick at the door to what seems to be the master's chambers. He knocks urgently and tries ramming the door with his shoulder, but grunts when the door wouldn't budge. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> good, good grunt. It's no use. Damn, no, that's the wrong voice. That's, it's no use. Damn it. If only I were stronger and didn't have so much sugar before bed and now I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm going to get a Nari. Something's wrong. Yeah, if anyone can break a door in this town, it's a Nari. The servants' quarters are on the other side of the house. Go up the stairs. Get a master key for the store. Ilona nods and follows Kellogg's instruction, passing through the now empty halls and up the stairs. She finds Isley first and explains the situation. Isley's eyes go wide as she fumbles her long green robe, producing a dangling set of keys and nearly dropping them in her haste. Copy of the master key? Come on, there's no time to waste! Why do you have a copy? I live here! <laughs> and sometimes I steal my daddy's magic textbooks from his room and he doesn't know! <laughs> when they rush back to the master's chambers, they realize there's no use for the master key. They find the door broken and battered, but no sign of Inari or Kellic yet. Blood splatter. Blood, blah, blood, blood. Dun, dun, dun. Blood, blah, blood, blood, blood. Traces of blood are on the door, with thick shards of wood splintering from fractures. From its fractures. Ooh. Ilona and Isley enter the bedroom, stepping over the part of the broken door. You're entering a crime scene! It smells strongly of blood and burnt hair. Hmm. I don't think forensics exists yet. They lay their eyes on the blood soaked bed sheets and the lifeless figure of Olden. His neck. Well, I guess that's one less character we have to. <laughs> his neck is mutilated, torn flesh hangs off of his body and his eyes. This background. It seems so, like, all these little... This is really cool. Yeah, the rough strokes are real good. Isley holds a hand over her mouth and squeezes her eyes shut. A figure of a man is hunched over a woman in a dress and makes his presence known. He turns to look at them. His yellow eyes give off an eerie glint as though they were an animal's. Sorry, I don't, I don't know how I ended... Edwin! Just was having the zoomies. I mean, did you just cut down the character cast by one? I don't know. Don't come any closer. Stay away before I make it too. It's hard to make out in the darkness, but his arms look huge and beat. Mm. The fur mixed. Oh yeah, look at those. <laughs> yeah, the fur mixed big, with the blood of opened wounds and bruises. With his body turned away, Ilona can't tell who it who is in his arms. I was reading that. Can't tell who is in his arms. But now she sees a ring on his hand and a chestnut brown hair. And out oh, chestnut brown? Chestnut brown hair. The sound of footsteps is heard again and Alona knows immediately who it is. Get away from him, Alona! I knew there was something wrong with him. I should have shot him dead when I had the chance. It wasn't me. Who puts that much sugar in their tea? <laughs> This is not the cool and elegant Anari uh, that Alona had seen earlier. Before. Instead, she disguises her sorrow with fury. Alona can't move, with Anari's arrow trained on him. Kellick rushes in, carrying a healer's kit. What are you gonna do? Man, he's a doctor. I believe in him. Edwin sets the body of the woman down and backs away. Kellick checks the unburned section of her wrist. There's only the sound of Kellogg's choking back in frustration and dismay. <clears throat> I was too late. 
I'm sorry. I'm gonna get this voice now. I couldn't save them! <laughs> Kellick is on his knees, facing Salome's corpse. So we did cut the cast down by two. Yep, you, yep. you have one less character now. <laughs> <laughs> All the jovial cheer that he had displayed since meeting Alona vanishes, and he resembles a husk of a man. And Nari moves in after seeing Edwin shows no sign of retaliation. We need to restrain him. Blur has gone missing. Oh, three? Is it three? I, I, I bet it wasn't him that did it. I bet someone else I didn't did do it. it. And he I was wasn't the one who did them. this. I but only yes, transformed yes. to to save them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An honest man would beg harder for his life. You sound like you've already accepted your... But is that how werewolves beg? <laughs> You really are a dog! <laughs> Wait! Please give us a minute. I, I want to talk to Edwin. Fine. One minute. And no more. I'll be counting. I'm sure you wouldn't be so stupid as to try anything. But be warned. Okay. Let's try something. Okay. <laughs> Crouch just down beside Edwin. His distant gaze lacks warmth and familiarity. Edwin. Can you hear me? I'm hear going to scritch your ears now. That's, that's, yep. All right. I feel better now. Dot, dot, dot. Ed. Ah, I'm a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, you're a werewolf, silly. I'm so Let's sorry. Try. I wasn't able to control it. It wasn't me. Can you do this one? My throat's killing me already. Sure. <laughs> Hearing him talk reassures her slightly. Ilona gingerly takes his wolf-like hands into hers. Even though his gaze is cold and stony, the hands still hold warm. Do you swear that you didn't kill them? When I entered the, when I entered the room, uh -oh. they were already Did like I this. The stream? I, I was dreaming about cats and kittens in a kennel. Were you chasing them, Edwin? We were just... Anyway. <laughs> um, sorry. We'll, we'll talk about that dream later, okay? It sounds very pleasant. Uh, th then you weren't the one that did this, right? Something's wrong. Your hands, they're not turning back. I've gone full furry. Oh, well, I guess I have to then. <laughs> Stop! Time's up! That was less than a minute! <laughs> yeah, Nari, give us more time. We're still fapping around here. <laughs> and Nari's voice is enough to cut the two apart. And Alona lets Edwin's hands immediately. Let's go of Edwin's hands. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. I can't say that I trust you quite yet, Ilona. You seem like a clever girl. And who would dare suspect a nun of planning such a gruesome scene? Turn yourself in quietly, Edwin, and I'll make sure her interrogation isn't painful. Lana isn't sure if Edwin obliged so easily because he feared for her safety, or if he truly has given up, like Inari said earlier. He wordlessly lets Inari bind him with chains. Maybe he's again, spicy it. again. We need a yeah. we need a safe word. I like banana. <laughs> banana, it is. Nari escorts him forcefully out of the mansion and takes him underground to a dungeon. This background, I didn't get to see this tree before because yeah, Edwin is so it. huge. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. Uh, yeah, I, it's really nice. It's really nice. Like it. Even this prison yeah. is nice. This is some fancy-ass prison. <laughs> yeah, he's going to the good accommodation. Yeah. The only thing Alona sees before the doors close is Edwin's worms. Edwin's tactic turn and listless. He could have worms. <laughs> Yeah, he might have to put some medicine <laughs> in his food later. Uh, the only people... Yeah, tech. I'm truly alone now. His hands are kind of cool, though. <laughs> With Edwin locked away, the remaining members of the party gather in the town square. Alona, Isley, Kellick, and Inari. Okay, so we have one healer, you're the warlock, and you're wizard, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody could find Fleur in the manse afterwards. Her room and bed empty of her presence. She's the werewolf. It's her. Mm. Or, or is it the dad? That, that, the sun, you know what? That would make sense. Yeah. The sun has not yet risen and the clouds are dark and looming. There's a damp chill in the air. 
Why is it so wet? What now? <laughs> All these voices are basically yeah. you. I know. What's up with this? <laughs> Don't be so hasty, Inari. There's lots of things we'd... we th Just because he had blood on his hands was standing over the bodies. <laughs> Besides, I'm certain I was the first one to wake up. I didn't see Alona do anything suspicious. That matches up with what I saw of her. It just doesn't seem likely that Alona would do it from what I know of her, you know? Like, she was really nice. What? You think she would let you in on her plots in one night? Damn, they caught me. That's precisely it. She's always... She's awful at keeping secrets. You know her for one day. I mm. could tell that they were boning. No. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. They did pick that apart pretty quickly. <laughs> If she already was involved, I don't think she'd be able to hide it. Or if she really was involved. Whatever. You know what? Words. Anari tries not to grumble, though Isley does have a point. It's not a very good point. It's it's, it's Ilona. It's a point. It's a point, but it is not a good point. <laughs> Did you know that man was a werewolf before entering this town? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um... Can I answer that? Yes, tomorrow, maybe? <laughs> yes. In my presence, he's more capable of con controlling his transformation. And yet you've been harboring a monster, regardless of the consequences. Uh, the mobile. I don't think that word means what he... No. <laughs> I am searching for a way to cure him of his curse. That is all. Please, I honestly don't think he did it. There must be more to what happened. I can help you find it. The town needs to know. We can't hide this for long. Not to mention, Fleur is still missing. As long as we keep an eye on Alona as she investigates, I think it should be safe. Anari sighs at Kelly's <laughs> advice. Yes. Alona can't help but be thankful for his ability to sway Anari's opinions for even just a moment. Oh, good. I, like I, didn't, the... I didn't think I had that great of an argument, but I guess now I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Fine. Let her run around. Just make sure someone keeps an eye on her. Always. I'll go first. You two assemble a search party for the forest in my stream is lagging. In the meantime, I'll lead the search once you're ready. Luna, you have it till sundown. Prove that Edwin is innocent, or I'm going to personally make sure you won't like what's coming for the two of you. Is it death? <laughs> yeah, that's probably what it is, but it sounds <laughs> way worse if I don't say that. <laughs> Act 2. All Hollows Day. The Cursening. I like the squeaky toy in the background for that. <laughs> yeah, I know! Show me whether yeah. squeaky toy is perfect. Oh, and here's oh the Olden's dead. Version. Okay, I didn't realize Olden was dead. Ilona takes one more look at the corpses of Salome and Olden. Charlotte examined the bodies when Edwin was being escorted to the dungeon. According to Inari, his role as a physician was extensive, and he treated many people during the war. All right, I'll take it back again for a moment. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is all your all... characters yeah. are dead. <laughs> yeah. This, is, this also meant that he's seen many corpses, making him considerably accurate in determining the time of death. Okay, well, see, here's the forensics. The methods and, yeah. methods and reasons for their death are clear. To further examination, Kellick would have to perform an autopsy. An auto? Well, get on it then. Is that is that how it's spelled? Oh. Yeah, autopsy. Bookie. That is spooky. From what Ilona can see, Olden died of blood loss. Yeah, well, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Salome shows signs of burns suppressing the third degree. Burns surpassing the third degree. Okay, so. He was chomped. Yeah, she was and burned. she was burned. And I don't think, I, I, as far as I know of Edwin, I don't, I don't see fire stuff happening. There's swelling at her neck and spine, possibly a fracture. Both of them died at around the same time, shortly before they entered the room to witness the gruesome scenario. Never mind. Am I here? Am I working? Yep, yeah, you're here. Okay, alright, I, I lost it for a second there. Could Salome have survived that attack, even for just a moment? 
Ilona looks around the room and sees the scorched walls and destroyed tapestries and paintings. Apparently, Uldum was capable of using fire magic. Did Salome get caught in his attack? I can't really imagine what happened. Can't really ima imagine that happening. that happening. I can I can speak honest. <laughs> <gasps> oh, <laughs> that was she's okay she's investigating. Okay. I was like, are they going... Okay. <laughs> Alona tries to find anything else in the room that could have been used. On the nightstand, there's a candle turned over. Droplets of now hard wax mar the wood surface. The burns scorching the wall in the room seem too significant to come to, from just a candle. Near the bed and on the floor are traces of fur. Some of it's burnt. I should investigate this fur and see if it's his. Yes, I definitely... Ed's fur looks like anything out of place. Ed's fur isn't calico. That's right. Fur is a lovely shade of, like, chocolate gray. That's you. <laughs> I said it. I said it. Maybe oh, okay. I cut out. Anything out of place? I'll say it again. Maybe Alona didn't hear it the first time. There's traces of fur, but that's about it. What about the other rooms? The other rooms aren't where the murders took place. <laughs> I know, but they might have clues in them. <laughs> Isley told me there's something that felt out of place in Fleur's room. Oh, right. I'll also Fleur's let you room. look right. through that's, Salome's room. That's important. Wait, Salome doesn't sleep in here? Wait, what? Okay. I guess maybe... I don't... Ooh. Maybe. Ilona decides to look in Salome's room first, the room closest to the master's chambers. The room is bright, orderly, and spacious, and, the part, and partly serves as Salome's studies. The most prominent part of this room is the writing table. Is a writing table. Items left strewn upon it as though she was in the middle of an important task. The stream not working. If I if I leave the call and come back, is that gonna mess up all your settings? Uh, what's going on? Do you know? Like, it's cutting out constantly. Uh, okay, you can try leaving and, and coming back and see what happens. I'm gonna just sit here and make noises until they come back. <laughs> How is everyone enjoying everything? <laughs> I like it so far. Okay, good. You're back. Uh, can they hear you? Yes, like can you so guys far. hear me? Okay, Am I good. truly, You're... truly back? Perfect. Okay. I'm gonna close that window. See if I help because it's still acting up. Is it still acting up? Yeah. Do you need to do a full restart? No, I think it's my internet in general because the stream is acting up too. Like, I have the stream paused. I'm just watching the chat, but I keep disconnecting from the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, weird. Okay. She asked you to go over the events of the day with her after she met us. I asked... Did you want me to take over as Anari during this, or...? Uh, to you. Or did you? It's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Correct. I gave my report about seeing you and Edwin for the lady's record keeping. The one thing that's not where it should be is this chest, though. What is it? Please don't hold anything back. I don't think it has anything to do with the murders. That chest was meant for Fleur when they had it made recently. It's natural she might have moved it since it w I was last here. She did worry about Fleur's future, after all. Salome was considering which items should go inside. It surprises Alona that Anari is suddenly so candid. Salome and Anari were closer in age, and it made sense that Anari acted as Salome's confident confidant. They then moved to investigate Fleur's room. Ilona couldn't help but be curious about what Anari had said earlier. Opening the young girl's room, both of them notice a distant lump in the bed. Ilona looks at Anari. They agree silently to move closer. Anari does not pay any heed to the room's whimsical decor, but Ilona can't help but steal glances at the spectacle of floral and woodland motifs in her belongings as they pass through. Last night... Alona never gave thought too much of Fleur's fascination with the strange and mythic, mystic, mythic tales, especially regarding the fair folk. 
She thought it just to be a passing interest. Her room speaks otherwise. The girl is, seems utterly devoted to the fa tales of fantasy. When they reach the bed, Alona isn't sure what to expect. Inari remains behind her and nods, indicating for Alona to pull back the cover. Alona can see something that looks like it's carved from wood. It resembles a wood statue or an effigy. The face looks eerily like Fleur, her expression mysterious, neither happy nor sad. The rest of the body looks as though it remains trapped inside of a still-living tree. Impossible! Inari does not say anything else, but moves back from the effigy. Her hands, her hand is bald, and her hands is bald. Her hand is bald into a fist and shaking from either rage or fear. I've seen quite enough. I don't have to remain in this silly room. She turns immediately on her heel. The sudden reaction surprises Alona, and she's unsure whether to follow or not. They keep some weird wooden statues here. Finding nothing else of note in the room, Alona joins Inari. She finds Inari with her back pressed against the wall, steadily taking deep breaths. For a woman who seemed to fear nothing, Alona can't fathom why Inari looks so scared at the moment. Anari, you don't look too well. I think we should pause our investigation for the moment. Um, would you like some tea? So I can poison it? What? Um, no, I wasn't thinking that at all. I'm just tea? looking at the camera because I feel like it. Do, do you notice tea? Some, th there's some teeth there. There's some bangs going on there. There are Does some it look teeth. like I'm in the mood for some tea right now? I'm in the middle of this mess. Is there something wrong with your head, sister? Have you forgotten the situation we find ourselves in? Anari, Anari, I think you're getting the zoomies. <laughs> I think you're right. Or are you trying to lace my drink with poison? She heard me. She yes, heard the thoughts. She heard my, my head. thoughts. Are you a psychic? <laughs> I can assure you, it's none of that. I find the culprit as much as you do, but I'll need your help for that. I only wish to see that you're in good health to proceed. So I thought we could take a quick break. <laughs> oh, the fang is gone. Some they must tea. be calming. Yep, I get it very well. I must tell you that I despise the leaves from this country, so you'd better make a swear word. Fine cup. <laughs> Are there any to your taste? Fine black tea. Bitter orange. I think Uldin had some in his pantry. Both of them fall silent. There's nobody in the house who can say what to do with Uldin's possessions. Anari isn't even sure if he left a will. Uldin isn't around anymore to enjoy what he had in life. That is certain. Anari goes into the pantry and finds some bl tea bri bricks. Yeah, tea bricks sealed in a container. She was sure that last night Salome and Fleur did talk about this kind of tea. Ilona, feeling some remorse as though the two of them were bandits, prepares the deceased man's tea according to Inari's instruction. Trying her best to be hospitable, Ilona also serves it with milk and sugar, as Fleur did. There's only a little bit of sugar left after how much Edwin went through. <laughs> Here you go. Please have some. Poison. No, 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 there's no poison, honest. <laughs> Ilona serves the tea to Inari. As expected, Inari does not take any of the milk or sugar. In contrast, Ilona puts a generous amount of both in hers. The taste was far too bitter for her to enjoy so early in the morning. Inari leans back in her chair, closing her eyes and taking in the aroma. She takes a sip before putting her tea down elegantly, without even the slightest clatter. Ilona follows suit, but she's not nearly as graceful. Anari rubs her temple with the tips of her fingers before speaking again. Speaking. Tell me. Are nuns this annoying? Pardon me? Whatever you're trying to do is futile. Re-examining the corpses or the rooms won't change anything. Edwin was the one that killed them. <laughs> what makes you so Evan, Evan, please, we can hear you all the way over here. Anyways, uh, uh, what makes you so sure of that? His evil laugh has nothing to do with this. 
I heard the details from Kellick and Isley. I also heard him <laughs> shouting through the walls last night. <laughs> <gasps> Inari details how the events played out. Salome screamed. Inari details how the events played out. Salome screamed. Wait, did it just... It was heard by Kellick and Alona, who were sleeming... Sleeming? What the hell is sleeming? Sleeping, sleeming. on the floor before... <laughs> floor below. Edwin was not in his room. Dun, 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 dun. Therefore, Edwin was already inside the master's chamber at the time of the murder. It would take some time for a person sleeping below the master's chamber to make it to the servants' quarters, which is on the opposite end of the manse. Since Inari was on duty for her job as the head of the town guard, she could not possibly be at the crime scene during the murder. Who's going to vouch for you, Inari? I Everyone's locations fangs. were accounted for. I was on patrol as the head of the town guard. Kellick was the first one to react to the scream, followed by you. Isley was in a room. Each of us were able to confirm each other's locations at the time of the murder. The only one who couldn't be found was Edwin. Why is she looking at the camera? She's telling us. It's gotta be him. How do you dispose? How do you dis dispose? Oh, wow. Mm. Sus uh, you know That's what? a slip. I didn't mean to. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> dispose of the bodies. Okay. That everyone is saying is the absolute <laughs> truth. Kellogg could have acted as he had witnessed. Kellogg could have acted as if he had witnessed the murder. We have no account of what he was up to before that. There was also nobody around to confirm that Isley was not at the crime scene, and I found her alone, with keys, I should add. And, with and finally, keys. yes. Where was Fleur? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Is or, Fleur you know the what? okay? I so is the effigy like as big as a person, or? Yeah, I'm not too sure. If it's a person-sized one, or like, if, if, I don't know. I do. You're smarter than you look, nun. Indeed, Fleur was missing at the time of the murder. Nobody had seen her enter or exit the manse. I'll give you that much, but I highly doubt she could be the murderer. She's far too frail. The door was destroyed in the time it took for Isley and I to return. How do you explain that? Uh... my line when it shows up on my screen uh, does the door being destroyed really mean anything doesn't change the fact that edwin was at the crime scene transformed dun 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 dun, dun. and did you not hear his screaming through the, the walls <laughs> that evil laughter i heard it out on my patrol let me cue you in on this out of everyone around here you and edwin are the most suspicious that's rude we just came here yeah we just got here the two of you are outsiders, whereas we've all known each other for a long time. Why, we're the perfect scapegoats for somebody's plan that they've been dealing with all their lives, ready to murder all of you! <laughs> I don't plan on letting my bias against the two of you get the better of me, however. Let's start at the beginning. What could be the motivation for the murder? That is a good... What is the motivation there, at all? <laughs> yeah. Kellick was an associate of Wolden and I during the war. He's selfless, to the point of stupidity. I guess serving as a medic will do that to you. It's hard to admit this, but I consider Kellogg to be a close friend. He is a kind-hearted man, but I'll never say it to his face. I'm a Sundari. <laughs> but that is no reason for letting him off the hook. He simply has no reason to murder. Please explain. He's as kind as he is weak, so I doubt he could overpower both Odin and Salome. Anything he could have ever needed, whether coin or rare books on magic, he could have simply asked Odin. They all did it. Every single one of them stabbed him. <laughs> <laughs> got some, one night he got really drunk and said something stupid. They've been playing this revenge yep. for a long yep. time. And they're just waiting for a werewolf and, and a nun to come through their city so they can murder them. <laughs> ah! take the blame. Whoops. What did I... History. Uh, it was this line, I think. One of these. Yeah. Yeah. And Olden wouldn't have hesitated because they share quite the history. I'm going to save over in here. <laughs> Turn. Although, I didn't read that line yet. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Although, one thing I can tell you for sure is, Kellogg is hiding something. Before he settled here, he had done nothing but walk and regret for five years, or so he says. It keeps him up at night. Whether it's related to this case, I do not know. Hmm, I see. 
and walked all night for a long time. He too has the zoomies. <laughs> Everyone here has the zoomies. Everyone it's all the sugar the and, and cream they drank yeah. in their tea. And the radioactive cheese. Yeah, the radioactive cheese. What about Isley? Honestly, don't know much about her. She acted as an assistant to Salome. To keeping with- I thought they were their children. Honestly, oh, I missed that. Oh, they're not their children? Yeah, I thought so. I thought they were introduced as their children, she but I, I guess not. Salome to, help. to help with okay. keeping the town running, organization, and task. She's been doing her fair share of blunders lately. I know she takes her job seriously. Perhaps she's just daydreaming more. I'm not saying that she's incompetent. Let me get that straight. As long as her clumsiness doesn't get in my way. Although I don't know much about her either to determine her motivation. Oh, Fleur is their child, Isley is not. Okay, okay. I just misread that at the beginning. Is she close with Fleur? They are almost the same age. Not really. Isley and Fleur seem to go the seem to be in their own heads. Isley with the study of magic as an apprentice, and Fleur being a little troublemaker and a prankster. I haven't had a line in a long time. <laughs> Don't worry, Edwin. You're always in my heart, even when you're not here. <laughs> my niece still plays jokes and tricks, even at her age. It's all childish nonsense. Fleur. Anari is confident up until this point, calm and refined. Now dread and restlessness begin to take over. Yet she could not overlook the superstitions of the Fae, even at, for someone as rational as her. The wooden effigy of Fleur, her disappearance, and the uncertainty behind the murder tarnishes Inari's unshakable visage. Moreover, Ilona's demeanor and her relationship with Edwin. Are you feeling all right, Inari? Don't you dare patronize me, woman! Who do you think you are? Prying so brazenly. Take your high and mighty servant of God tripe somewhere else. Well, that was very sudden. I don't know. What, what did I do? <laughs> Trying to save that monster lover of yours. Are you out of your mind? There's that fang again. Yeah, she got the fang going. Why are you looking at us, the audience, with that fang? <laughs> she gonna eat us. Oh. That that might explain everything. I do not know what has gotten into you all of a sudden, but I do not appreciate being spoken to like this. Wait a I second. I showed compassion for you, but time is of the essence. Instead of listening to you berate me, I should be finding the murderer. They have fur on their clothing. They've got the curse, too. Oh, you're right. Dun, dun, dun. dun. Mm. Silence looms over, waiting to be broken. Anari glares, her hand instinctively touching one of her arrows. She grimaces and folds her arms across her body. I'm sorry, I had to have a sip of Mountain Dew. I didn't I didn't mean to lash out at you like that. It's just, I want to find the culprit behind this mess and save my hot, burly wolf boyfriend. Don't you understand? I only had the zoomies. Yes, he's only guilty of the zoomies. It's fine. If... The I standing here was the Inari a couple years back. You would have been mutilated by now. Okay. You cannot <laughs> say- That's not telling. <laughs> That's- You know what says werewolf? Mutilated <laughs> says werewolf. However, I did step out of line. Who you choose to be with is none of my business. I know violence for the sake of it won't solve anything. Though we may not see eye to eye on everything, nun, I quite like you now. What is happening? <laughs> T must have swayed my opinion, I'm sure. She's a Sundari. Although she's admitting she likes me, so maybe not. <laughs> oh my we're god! On terms when now. You just yelled it, alright. Alright, I'm just gonna go with this because I need to save my boyfriend. I need to save my hot boyfriend. <laughs> this lady's weird. <laughs> Are we? Are we? <laughs> I'm looking at the camera. I look at the camera again. It's perfect. Are we really on good terms? Are I'm we so on good terms? What do you, the audience, think? Do you see the good terms here? <laughs> She's waiting now. Pull the audience. <laughs> and I can't bear to see you with such a sad face. I'll let you in on a little secret. There's a cure for lycan lycanthropy. What do you? you? You may yet be rid of the beast that lies within your dear beloved. No, but he's so furry and soft. 
but yeah, it's really nice at night sometimes, you know? It keeps you warm. For your and Edwin's sake, suggest you use it. Is she poisoning him? Which is... Murder. It's yeah, for the I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Of course, I knew it was. Oh wow! Look at that. That's not, that's not much of a cure at all, actually. Why okay. do you keep looking at us, the audience, with that fang? Are you hinting us? Should I? Should I eat us? <gasps> <laughs> the look on your face, brilliant. <sighs> Now, now, I heard don't that. Give me that I... Look, I was only kidding. I mean, this is definitely a time for jokes, don't you think? Lots of people are dying. Uh, partly. Anyhow, enough chit chat. I must go and make preparations to leave the search party for Fleur. I should take my leave as well. Um, there's much to consider after what I've seen today. But I'm really uncomfortable here. <laughs> yeah, definitely making me a little nervous. I need to go. I need another line again. I feel like I'm being forgotten. I'm gonna like his post on Twitter. Indeed. <laughs> I can't wait to hear. Oh, this is the wrong character! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Sorry, I read your lines. I can't wait to hear what kind of answer you'll give me at sundown. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't I can't ever you. tell if you're on my Don't side. Don't worry, we also can't tell. <laughs> yeah, we really can't tell. I wonder. Oh my too. god, stop looking at us. <laughs> they, they're very self-aware. Uh, this is this is sus. If you ever want to be sus, that 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 is sus. Yeah. Ah, I'm enjoying this so far though. Yeah, it's really good. Look at yeah, the I know light. we're I know we're making a lot of jokes. Yes, but, but we're time. having a great time. <laughs> um I really like all that. Yeah, this is really nice. I like the sun. Um I find that the tower is a little phallic, though, but it's it's all right. Oh goodness! <laughs> Anari leads her out of the room. Anari As leads a her nun, out of the room. I cannot believe you say such things <laughs> in the presence of God. Elota is covered in a light sweat, and she can feel her heart leaping frantically inside her chest just by thinking. So, she's now thinking about her while having frantic heart palpitations. So, I guess that means they're they're now lesbians. I guess so. That's not a very healthy relationship, though. Anari is not stable. <laughs> Kellick is waiting at the square, and, his, and he exchanges some words with Anari. Their voices are indistinct and quiet. Iona, Iona's own heart sounds louder in her ears, so much so that it's making, it we, her, ah, it's making her weak and dizzy. Her extremities are tingling. That line... Got a brain. It is taking everything for I like the effect. That's a good effect. It's taking everything mm -hmm. for Alona to stay conscious. Anari gazes at her before smiling to herself and walking away. Alona sees a figure move in front of her clad in black robes. Where to? Huh? She can barely recognize the voice. Alona's vision blurs as the ground beneath her feet feels unsteady. Hey, is everything all right? Stay with me. Alona? Dun dun dun! Poisoned? Poisoned. I passed out. I couldn't take it anymore. I haven't seen my wolfy boyfriend. <laughs> when Alona opens her eyes again, she's in an unfamiliar bed and room. The air is heavy with a medicinal smell, suffocatingly so. She feels far too aware of her body. Her mouth feels dry and her heart still feels like it's beating too fast. Did. Hey. Was I? Take it easy. You're safe. We're still in the manse. How long was I out for? It's almost midday. Yona uh, gr grimaces. Grim grimaces. Too much I am time. Was <laughs> too much time was lost. She moves her arms slowly. Her body heavy. Sensation comes back into the tips of her finger and the unpleasant tingling stops. The smell of herbal medicine starts to become more bearable to her senses. It wasn't an order ordinary fainting spell. You should have regained consciousness faster if it simply was fatigue and stress. I've taken precautions and treated you for poisoning. Then, do you think... Did Inari try to poison me? 
I suppose you can't really rule that out as a possibility. Did you drink or eat anything with her? Only tea, but I was the one who suggested and prepared it. Oh, perhaps you dropped the poison into your own cup accidentally. Uh, you I are might the have poisoner. Switched. I might have got them backwards. It's true. I'm a little clumsy. I didn't see her slip anything in my drink. In fact, she was convinced I was trying to poison her. She's not the type to take such a cowardly approach. Hmm, maybe the tea was poisoned before you even got there. She may seem cruel, but I don't think she would go that far as to sabotage your efforts to put a stop to you. It seems you and Anari know each other well. I don't have much time, but I need to ask. She had an extreme reaction upon seeing a wooden statue resembling Fleur. What could have terrified her so much about it? Truth be told, I don't really know much about her history. Only rumors. She must think that the statue has something to do with the Fae. Something in her past made her be wary of them. Fleur admires the fair folk. The wooden statue is too elaborate to be one of Fleur's pranks, especially with the death of her parents. So her aversion to seeing the statue has to do with her trauma and distaste for Fleur's Fae-related tricks? Something like that. Anari hates being pitied. She doesn't even show pity for anyone else either. She would be terrified at the thought of Fleur being spirited away by the fair folk. It's not something that she could ever accept. That's probably why she's leading the search. Iona shifts her, Ilona shifts her body off the bed, able to move freely again. Kalik invites her to take a seat, and Ilona does so. He pours her some... <laughs> it should be a drinking game of each time I pronounce the name wrong. He pours her some <laughs> clear water. The smell of the simmering stew wafts from the kitchen. About the tea you had with Anari. Was there anything odd about it? I'm asking because before the banquet, I gave my headset. Okay. I gave Ulden his medicine. A power, powerful, sulfurific? I don't, I, I know that word, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, so I think soap, soporific. Uh, that sounds uh, wrong horrific. though. Soporific. Soporific. Powerful. Soporific. Soporific. Okay. We're learning. There were three less doses in the pantry when I checked. Ben, you think someone last night... There's a light knock on the... No. There's a light knock on the door. Kellick tells them to enter. It's Isley. Oh, Lona, I heard you fainted in the town square. I was worried. Ah, yes. I invited Isley over for lunch. Ilona, you probably haven't eaten it yet. At, uh, Ilona, you probably haven't eaten it all yet. Have you? No. Nope. I'm doing that lie. You probably haven't eaten it yet all yet, have you? You should try to eat, even if it's just a little. Da, da, da. And then her stomach growls. I guess it's hard to trust anyone after what you've been through. I mean, I was just poisoned, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, it's fine. I'll eat with you. You're right. I probably can't do too much if I don't take care of myself. Excellent. I, have a I big can have my second boyfriend. attempt at it. <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, nothing. Nothing. <clears throat> oh, okay. It's this cough. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. Kellick serves Isley and Alona in a rustic stew with a, dark, with a dark red and clear water on the side. During the time eating together, Isley asks about the investigation and Alona repeats Anari's reasoning surrounding Isley and Kellick. Alona thought that uh, Anari's defense was unbreakable, but there was one new thing she learned about last night. So, are you considering the possibility someone tried to drug us during the bank? It'd be a very long-lasting effect. Hmm. That's what I feared, at least. Anari and I left before that, so I don't really have a clear picture of what exactly happened. Alona stares at an empty teacup in a room and realizes something. If the tea Should I hold one up for you in front of the screen, Alona? There you go. <laughs> if the tea she served Inari was different, but she used the same sugar from last night, it was the sugar. <gasps> the sugar! And Edwin was also... With... <gasps> yeah, he, he had lots of sugar. Last night, I didn't add any to my tea because I didn't want to be rude. But I took some when I had tea with Inari... And Inari didn't have any sugar. She right. knew. She knew. Poison sugar. I remember, Fleur was really insistent on putting sugar in my tea. I did think that was weird. <gasps> Our valley girl? 
our valley girl. How much sugar did you put in the tea this morning, Al uh, Alana? <laughs> Four spoonfuls. I'm really worried about my boyfriend, okay? I can, I can, I can still hear you. I lost the oh. voice. <laughs> That's you. You're up. Honestly, uh, that sure is a lot. Goodness, no wonder you were out for so long. I'm surprised Anari didn't get your your case for adding tea to your sh ah, didn't get on your case for adding tea to your cup of sugar. I think we can confirm his theory to be true. Then someone was trying to put us into a deep sleep, and there's a chance they were trying to target Edwin specifically because he was putting a lot of tea in his er, sugar in his tea. I mean, a <laughs> no, he's lot. putting a lot of tea in his sugar. His real well, he was putting he was putting a little tea in his sugar. Let's be real. <laughs> then that would implicate Salome or Fleur, most likely. They were the ones who prepared the tea last night. It's not like I can deny it, but. Holden could be involved too. Why uh, did you do the thing to harm yourself? Hmm. The truth is, the medicine he uses is made to look as inconspicuous on is made to look inconspicuous on purpose. I never inquired too closely about it, but he comes from a rather unscrupulous family. It wouldn't surprise me if he was aware of this plot. Kellick seems to know the mo most about Alden's family in his circumstances, so Alona asks him more for more information. Alden suffers from insomnia and slept in a separate arrangement so as to not disturb his wife. Okay, we get this answer. Yeah. Last night was also one of the rare occasions where Alden was back in town as he traveled frequently for his research studying magic. Salome often handles the day-to-day -day affairs of managing Bar Balarov, Olden came back a day ago, and his return was welcomed back with a feast of on, on Hall, All Hollows Eve. On the topic of magic, Isley recalls something that she needed to discuss. Could you tell us more about how Edwin is able to transform into a werewolf? Have you ever seen him do it? Does, like, his muscles flex and his clothes tear off or something? <laughs> is no, it like the Hulk? I have not. You have a very wild imagination, child. When he transforms, even when I ask him of it, he tells me to look away or to close my eyes. So because his clothing rips off, rip off. You, you yeah. Don't wanna, yeah, you don't want to. You, you've probably yeah. figured that one out, Isley. Wait, why do you ask him to transform? What do you do when he's a werewolf? <laughs> I, um. I just scratch his ears, okay? Okay. It's a secret. Okay. Secret. Okay. I'm telling you nothing. The safe word, He's remember, like, Edwin earlier said the safe word was banana. Bananas. Yep. Yep. Secret? Wait, precisely it. Everyone else looks at Isley in, in alarm. I heard of shape changers before while studying cursed objects. They would either use an ointment or the pelt of an animal to assume the form of a beast. If the curse was tied to his body, he wouldn't fear you witnessing his transformation. You've obviously seen his body. <laughs> but, what if it, but what if it was an item? If he feared betrayal, he wouldn't even show it to an ally. You could take his power away, and then you could become the furry burly wolf girlfriend. <laughs> Besides, there's always risk involved in keeping an item safe. So it is better that the only, bear, only the bearer knows about it. Because it could get lost, or destroyed, or... Stolen. <gasps> both Kellick and uh, both Kellick and Alona look at Isley with tense faces. Alona isn't sure what to more to be surprised at. Isley's incredible reasoning and and knowledge, or that someone would go as far as to steal an item uncertain to be in Edwards, uncertain to be in Edwin's possession. Someone would go as far as to steal an item uncertain. Okay. There's a high chance that this cursed item still exists. Had it been destroyed, he would have died along with it. What then? Then this gets even scarier. This would give us reason as to why Edwin was drugged last night. Alden and Salome are sharp, and they might have caught on to Edwin being a werewolf early on. Oh, no, it's not that they're sharp. He's just very bad at keeping secrets. <laughs> if we return this item to Edwin, it would restore the transformed arms back to his human form? It's entirely possible. 
If that's what controls the transformation, a cursed item like that can generally be bound to only one person. Someone else could have used it, but... Wooden would have would understand the consequences of such a thing. I highly doubt it would be him. Even so, finding this item might lead us to finding the true culprit. Or at least help make sense of this tragedy. You might not be able to convince everyone that Edwin is innocent otherwise. Yes, Hanari wouldn't accept it so easily. What would it take to convince her of Edwin's innocence? Short of having the culprit confess their crime, or finding Fleur and hope for an answer? I don't know. See change. Please tell me I'm coming back. I would like to be back now. The three of them start with their search of the cursed item. Based on Inari's report, Kellett confirms that Alona was that that confirms with Alona that nobody was able to enter or exit the town after Alona and Edward entered. Isley was eager to help out in any way possible now that there was a chance of witnessing or finding a cursed magical object. Kellett knows this. But I'm not meant to have a copy of the Master Key. I used to be a thief before I came that's what here. I, see, that's why I was yeah, like, there was some right. sus. There was some the sus reason, there. The reason why I asked to be an assistant of this household is because I tried to steal one of Golden's rare books. I, she was stealing books. However, I put the past behind me. Did we Golden, call that too? No, <laughs> yeah, we, we did. Golden made me his friend instead of punishing me, and I'm thankful for that. He taught me a lot, you know? And now he's dead. Lona can't help but find this suspicious. They start their search around Olden's chambers once again. Once again, they see the mutilated corpse of Olden and the corpse of Salome burned beyond recognition. So, are the bodies just sitting there? I guess so. We're just leaving. I mean, they don't got police to come take them away. I suppose. Despite thoroughly searching their bodies, the trio was unable to find the cursed item or anything else of importance. Of course the killer wouldn't. They, they would take it with them. They move on to Salome's room. Nothing appears to have been touched since the last time Alona was here with Inari. Like Inari, Isley comments that the chest was moved and then moved to in, moves to inspect it. Yes. Last time I saw it, it wasn't locked. Salome was still arra rearranging it to look nice. That's one bottle of water down. Let me try opening it. I just told you I'm a thief, and I can pick some locks. Isley pulls out a set of various different keys and picks, agitating each in the keyhole to no avail. You're not a very good thief. I thought you said you put your past behind you. I did, but I thought the tools might be useful one day. We're not doing a good thing. We're doing a good thing, uh, aren't we? Lockpicking is not inherently evil when you're trying to solve the murder of two people. Full of surprises, eh? I trust you're not making excuses now. You are looking rather suspicious. I merely... Absolutely... I never steal anything from your doctor's office. A whole bunch of stuff just falls out of their pockets now. <laughs> like, potions fall on the ground. You hear ding, 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 ding. Um, Rare books. Some yeah, money. Six books. Um, a library card. Not, not mm. hers. Yeah, it doesn't have her name on it. <laughs> I got it! She jams the lockpick into the keyhole and wriggles it around. A faint click is heard. <gasps> Ooh. <It's gasps> oh, two of them. <laughs> ah, third. Three! <laughs> oh, there's a fourth. Four! We're still oh, going. Oh, wow. Five! I got intense. I see. <laughs> it hurts, it hurts. It won't stop bleeding. Kellick fumbles through his thick, heavy cloak, drawing out a clean cloth for use as compress. I need to do something. There should still be some medicinal supplies in my room. Let's move there. Do you need my help? I know some healing magic. It's all right. I've got this. I could never let you do it. I have to do this. Look, I have to do it. Okay, I get it. You're the town doctor. I just need to slow the bleeding and elevate the injury site. Don't touch anything else in this room. I'll be back soon. 
Oh, I'm going to touch everything in this room. Kayla can Isley make their descent down the stairs. All that remains near the chest is the blood that poured from Isley's hand, the lockpick set, and Alona. The hairs on Alona's arm raise as she can feel her heart beat faster. She puts her hand on her chest as though uttering a short prayer. Dear God, I don't want to be stabbed. <sighs> Breathe. If the chest was a trap, there has to be something in there that someone doesn't want found. Despite her best instincts, Alona picks up the lockpicks Isley's used. Isley used. She spots a thin tool and uses it to pry the wood chest open. The chap was already disengaged, the danger gone. She sighs with relief. Nestled underneath delicate pieces of jewelry and other finery lay the red ray lay the red and glistening gold of a sash. It has blood stained hor hori? Hori? Fur? On one side. Yeah. It's must Ilona touches the wolf skin. She thinks back to meeting Salome and the dissonance between the friendly encounter and the thought of Salome as a cold blood killer. Oh, okay. I see what they're saying. I was confused. I'm like, did she think that right away? <laughs> no. I, I, it took no. me a second. <laughs> Salome seems so kind and caring. Could someone like that really be a murderer? A slip of paper falls out with the, a slip of paper falls out with the wolf skin. The contents addressed to the sculptor to a sculptor according to the paper the deposit was paid for but the project was never finished and was thus refunded a note explains that the item was delivered yesterday wait it was refunded okay said salome thing but the final product was never finished this could be important we better help hold on to this entered into your court record yep what about this chest objection fleur witnessed the murder did she take the wolf skin and leave it as a message in her mother's room? But the chest is trapped and placed in the open. That doesn't make sense. Why would she want us to find it only to hurt us? Ooh, pretty. Yeah, this background is just really nice. Wait, is that a little cave in the bottom? It is. Oh, it's where, it's where Edward is. We're going That's to see Edwin! <gasps> Finally! <laughs> Alona makes her way to where Edwin is imprisoned in the darkness of his soul. The dungeons are behind <laughs> the ruins of the chapel, which is on the southeast side of the manse. She inserts the lock pits into the keyhole. She learned how to do this? Alona has only witnessed Isley do it once, and it's not so easy as a... Yeah! <laughs> I thought I could be a pro. One glance. After what seems like an eternity, the door opens with a loud click and a metallic groan. She figured it out? Man, she is good. She's a natural. Fearing that Inari or someone else will hear her in the dungeon, she hesitates. If she stays behind, if she stays behind, there was no knowing what the others would do if they laid their eyes on Wolfskin. Kellick and Isley may have seemed cooperative up until now, but that could change if they lusted after its power for themselves. Now, Alona's only chance is to return to Edwin privately. I must have courage. I know that I made the right decision. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I've been away from him for far too long. If this can ease his spirits or calm his mood, even just a little, then it would have been worth it. We're so close. Salome must be the one who did it. If I can just get Edwin to confirm it, then I won't have any fear. Sup. <laughs> Sup. Edwin is sitting in darkness. His eyes make out a figure in white clutching the wolf skin in her hand. Alona, you shouldn't be here. Wait, you found the... I was alone when I took it. Nobody wore it either. Thank goodness you're okay. Where did you find it? Salome's bedroom, inside a chest meant for Fleur. What? That's... Edwin falters, lost for words. Ilona kneels down, returning the wolf skin to Edwin. She asks where he normally would wear it. Mm. After he tells her, she follows his directions and ties it to the inside of a thick leather plate. Okay, we're good. We're good, maybe. Chains fall, mm. Chains fall to the floor, unbinding his previously thick wolf skin. Mm. Now restored to human form. Okay, we're good. We're good. Yeah, I get the brain out of the gutter. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> You saved my life once again. Thank you. 
Please, there's no need to thank me. It's given me a small chance to talk to you again. Do you think you can tell me more about the murder? It wasn't me. I know you were- I, I know didn't you do it. Really I just really... had the zoomies. Oh, listen! Listen! I, I know. I have them now! You've released me! <laughs> of course. Though you probably know more about it than I do. If I think of who could have been present in the Master's Chamber at the time, only two people remain. Does Salome or murder Olden? I've gathered they must have died from the wounds they inflicted on each other. Am I correct? From what I could tell, yes. But I... I've already put you through too much. You have to stop this investigation. There's no use in getting your hopes up. I'm doomed. I'm doomed to the darkness that's as dark as my soul. Edwin, Edwin, we've talked about this self-deprecation a lot of times already. Will you stop I did not self-defecate. That's not what I said. <laughs> uh, what? I don't understand. We're so close to finding out the truth. What I is there left to hide? This. <laughs> I love this. If I were to live my life honestly, if I were not a monster, you wouldn't have to keep living a lie. A lie that I've built. Earlier today, I saw you holding Salome's corpse in your arms. What happened? I hid the answer from you for a reason. Please, don't pry any further. You really did kill her. His eyes are empty and cold. At his loss for words, Alona's heart sink. Her hands tremble and she lowers her head. No, there's no way. I... You couldn't have. I should have said something sooner rather than have you go through all of this. I'm sorry. I believe you are innocent. If it truly were that simple, then, well, I wouldn't have been locked up. You know, many people have been locked up for... Eh, all right. <laughs> Ugh, Edwin's got a brood. <laughs> she tokes back her tears before gathering her composure and speaking again. Tell me everything, even if the truth will doom us. I need to know. You're working really hard at not swearing. <laughs> I don't swear. I know you, you can't don't. can't trick me into swearing text. I retired to my bedroom after Holden's story about werewolf attacks. I couldn't take much more of it. After that, I fell into a deep and dreamless sleep. <laughs> oh, no, uh, actually, Edwin, you were most certainly, definitely dreaming. I, Look, I, I could just, hear you. It was cats and kennels again. I know. At first, I noticed the wolf skin was gone when I heard the scream. The faint scent of perfume made me think it must have been Salome's doing. Okay. Did you hear me knocking on your door? I didn't know if you were alone. I heard Kellick's voice on the other side. I kept quiet, quiet, knowing I couldn't risk opening the door with my arms transformed. So, when Kellick and I left to seek help, you moved to the master bedroom? Yes. If the wolf skin had been taken, it surely would be there. I was only thinking of saving my own life. When I broke down the door, Salome was on the ground, barely conscious anymore. The room was full of smoke and ash. She still had some lichen features, fangs, and claws. Her voice was thin, high, and frail. Her body seemed so small. I'd never seen burns that horrible. I asked to have the wolf skin back, but she ignored my plea. With the last of her strength, she begged me to kill her. Ilona remained silent for a, while, a long while. The fatigue is starting to set in, and she feels ready to crumble. How did you do it? Kellogg ruled her death as complications from her burn wound. I tried to think of the most merciful way to give her peace. I truly did pity her. We suffered the same curse, and I felt my sorrow in her. She had the same darkness in her soul. Oh, great. I held her close and crushed the bones in her neck. They would see that, hoping for an instant death. <laughs> I mean, Kellogg might not be as good a doctor as he thinks, I guess. You're certain you killed her. She wasn't already dead before that? When a bearer of the wolfskin dies, they revert to human form. She no longer had any bestial fi fish. Okay. 
Yeah. So he he crushed the the bones of her neck when she was a wolf. Maybe that like complicates makes autopsies hard. Yeah. She no longer oh, they had did any bestial the features I when that. I was done. And as you searched for the wolf skin, we found you. Yes. How you found it in the chest in Salome's room, I don't know. I swear, I wouldn't put it there. Did you see all those sharp, pointy bits? I know, that was very terrifying. Ilona and Edwin fall silent. Even though he had killed Salome, he was not the one who had orchestrated the murder of Olden. Ooh, pretty. Very pretty. Super pretty. <gasps> Changing colors. Flora still hasn't been found. People fear she's acted, actually been kidnapped or taken by the Fae. Do you think that could be the case? Her location was not accounted for during or after the murder. Part of me believes she's more than just a witness. Then you believe her to be an accomplice, or if she were the murderer? Hmm. Edwin considers this for a moment. If she wore the wolf skin, perhaps she also has the zoomies. But if she truly is lost, then she'd be suffering the same consequences as I did. It's excruciating to go through, and it really makes your soul dark. I know, I know. When I was first given the wolf skin, I foolishly tried to part with it and leave it behind. In retribution for not heeding the curse, I was left howling in pain. Sorry. If she's still missing and guilty, she needs to have incredible fortitude to remain silent for such a long time. Then maybe Flora was just an accomplice. Unwilling, perhaps? I strongly believe that she helped Salome. That probably is the safest assumption until she is found. If only we had been honest and asked to stay together. I wouldn't have been able to control my dark desires. No. <laughs> I can handle your dark desires, Edwin. It's fine. <laughs> no. Had they sought the wolf skin while we were together, they might have killed you to get their hands on it. It would have been just as easy to frame me for that. This may have been one for the best. Well, this may have been for the best. Let's not think about that now. I'm as involved in this as you are regardless. Ilona, listen to me. The people here, they appreciate you. I meant to bring this up in the morning, but we, you know, but when yeah, we saw each other again. You, you should stay here. Let them dispose of me. Live and survive. Find another werewolf boyfriend who's hot and brooding like me. And watch you die? Do you really think that would... I would be happy with something like that? Hot and brooding. <laughs> yeah, that's you. You're hot and brooding. I I'm gonna get what's coming to me sooner or later. Your hurt and pain will heal. You can recover. If you're with me, you won't be able to walk a righteous path. But if you leave me here, at least one of us will survive. Enough! I was well aware of the consequences when I left the Priory with you. I'm not trying to find a way to break your curse so I can return to the Priory. I should repent for my sins. I'm doing it so we can live together without the constant fear of being hunted down. So we can have zoomies together at the night? Yes! Exactly! Uh, if you really want. I can't do that if you offer yourself up to be killed. Edwin goes to reach for her face but pauses. He slips off his glove first and brushes away alone his tear with his thumbs. Aw. Then we need to survive and break the curse. We'll travel to my homeland. You can meet my family. They're really cool. They also... No. <laughs> we'll live in a valley by the lake, and you... You won't have to feel lonely ever again. There's so many fish in that sea. I want is you. <laughs> he smiles warmly at her. Her tears subside. I'm, I'm picturing like a dogfish now. Um, her tears <laughs> subside as he wipes them away. She touches the, her, the hand at her cheek, laughing lightly at his comment. Let's not get ahead of ourselves yet. We need to figure out a plan first. Now that I, now that you have your wolf skin back, you can easily break through the chains. We could escape. It'll be difficult, but I can try. 
The walls are high, but I could scale them if I transform. If you survey the town's layout looking for a part of the wall that could give me some footing, that would help us. Aren't you in a cave? I think he means break out of the bars, because the, I think the set, yeah, the city used to be in a fortress. So oh, okay. A wall. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Understood. I should go. Someone might be searching for me. No kiss. No kiss. Ilona tries the chains around Edwin again. His possession of the wolf skin should remain a secret until the time comes for them to escape, and he partially transforms his arms, appearing as he did before. Yeah, furry arms. <laughs> After confirming that nobody is at the door to the dungeon, she exits outside. The door to the dungeon shuts with a metallic groan. The I'm wind... wolf, my friend. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> the wind howls as she draws her nun habit closer to her body. The ruins of the chapel loom towards her, as though the remaining structure threatens to collapse. What are you doing here, Ilona? Praying for the help, or praying for help now of all times. Why do you have that thing again? What big teeth you have! All the better to smile at you with, Ilona. <laughs> Ilona's heart leaps when she hears Anari speak so suddenly. Did we cut out? Uh oh. Oh, I think I'm back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. I was praying for your success in finding Fleur. Any new leads? No. But there's still time before sundown. We'll search the forest. I had to personally oversee another crucial job. What might that be? Making sure there's enough firewood to build a pyre. Can't burn my doggy boyfriend. <laughs> you know how awful the smell of burning fur is. Please, that would be terrible. Edwin is a huge man. Wouldn't it be terrible to burn him at the stake only to leave the job half finished? And he can turn into a werewolf. What if he transforms as he's burning up? You may think him a monster, but sometimes you speak like one. Do you not see my fang? Yes, I thought it was pretty clear I'm a monster by this point. <laughs> It's not like I'm the one who murdered two people. But I'm sure you had more than enough time to learn how your beloved little werewolf took care of that through your investigation. You shouldn't let your guard down. I have a better understanding of the situation now. Good. This should be entertaining. With that remark, Inari leaves. In the remaining time, Ilona re reconvenes with Kellick. Isley's condition is now stable as she's resting. The bleeding ceased. As part of the investigation, Alona and Kellick join the search for party for Fleur. As part of the... In oh, does that thingy. While doing so, Alona searches for an escape route and any part of the wall that looks like it could be scalable. Eventually, Kellick takes his leave to watch over Isley to make sure that her condition remains stable, leaving Alona in the town square. Ooh, pretty. Oh, look nice. at the purples. I like yeah, it. good colors. Those are great colors. The day grows darker as the sun dips below the horizon. Edwin is brought out from the dungeon, his wolf-like arms bound in chains. Inari is waiting. Several of the town folks look at the pyre. There's an air of formality, formality? Yeah. surrounding Inari. Clad in her red hunting gar garments, the vibrant color is illuminated by the glow of the sun. We will begin the proceedings against Edwin, who was apprehended this morning. He has made his companionship with the nun, Ilona Clear. Ilona has been harboring with him harboring him with the knowledge that he is a werewolf. <gasps> Edwin was found on scene, holding Salome's lifeless body. I'll start first with some important information. Objection! We did not. <laughs> what is your objection? <laughs> We could not locate Fleur, but we found this envelope in the forest. The seal on it was intact. Inari's face is grim. She pulls out the letter, the seal broken. She reads the brief message out loud for all to hear. Oh, this, this letter's gonna have to be read in the Valley Girl voice. <laughs> By the time you receive this letter, I will be reunited with who I consider to be my true family. 
I could only choose one or the other, so I had to decide to take the re so I decided to take the test of faith to prove my worthiness. I will strike terror into the one who has abandoned me. <laughs> In doing so, I have let fate decide my hand, and this was the result: to reunite with me the fair ones, to reunite with the fair ones forevermore. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't know what that <laughs> accent was, but it was crazy. It was everywhere. <laughs> We are certain that this is her handwriting. Fleur is no longer with us. She has been taken by the fair folk. We couldn't find any trace of her, not even footprints, or any clues towards her disappearance. With that matter settled, let's proceed with Edwin. The nun Alona has prepared a defense. Please, eyes. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I got it. The words, the words are stuck in Alona's throat. She thinks deeply about the contents of Fleur's letter, but it truly sounds like the young girl mysteriously vanished, though a part of her can't accept that explanation so easily. I could only choose one or the other, and so I've decided to take the test of faith to prove my worthiness. Alona decides that they should le at least begin with what they know from the investigation and think about Fleur's letter along the way. Tumar has at least two conspirators involved. Salome, Fleur. Oh, go on. Both Salome and Fleur conspire together to drug the guests at the banquet by poisoning the sugar with a powerful, oh no, I forget the word already. Let me... Sopor soporific? Soporific. Soporific. Yeah, I have the, so I have the thing right there. <laughs> soporific. Uh, right. I need to be on the right page. <laughs> this was given to Ulden by Kellogg last night as part of his medicine to aid his sleeplessness. Kellogg has confirmed three doses of this medicine disappear from his dispensary. During the banquet, Fleur and Salome were able to figure out Edwin's true nature and thought to drug him by lacing the sugar with a soporific. Edwin was asleep. They were able to steal a cursed item from him and assume the form of a werewolf. All I care about are the deaths themselves at the end of the day. So, who was the one that murdered Uldin? Save. You're gonna make choices here. I feel it. Save. <laughs> Yolanda thinks carefully about the course of events and what she really saw. The corpse of Salome burned beyond recognition. Her voice was thin, high, and frail. Her body seemed smaller, prob possibly due to the burn. Froys? If she wore the wolf skin, a theory appears before her, dispelling the illusion of what she saw. If she was right, then this would explain the tragedy of the last night in its entirety. How were you able to identify- How are you? Oh, it's you. That's me. It's okay. How were you able to identify the burned corpse in the ma master's chamber? Uh -huh. Her skin was charred beyond recognition. So we had to resort to what remained of their, her hair and her ring to determine it was Salome. Ah, uh, the dead body's flur. Did Salome have any identifying features on her body? Anything at all that could be used to set her apart? Nothing that I know of, apart from a mole near her eye. And as I said, her face has been horribly burned. Then, here's my answer for who murdered Odin. The culprit was Fleur. Then, oh, the corpse of Salome has been misidentified. What? How dare you doubt Kellogg's judgment? You must be truly grappling at straws to make such bold claims. Objection! You said the corpse's <laughs> face, hair, and body were burned to an unrecognizable state. The only identifiers we had were Salome's ring and her nightgown, all clothing and effects. I insist this is Fleur's body. Say we believe you for one second, we mistook one corpse for another. Why Fleur? Why would she ever want to murder her own father? I don't have all the details. This is only a theory and the letter's contents can be believed. Her letter read, I will strike terror into the one who has abandoned me. Fleur's letter talks about choosing her true family. Wilden is not frequently in this town, is he? He has essentially abandoned his daughter. Uh, one, one second, sorry. I have to. Yeah, we, we both have to drink a lot. Oh, 
only the guests were drugged that night, but not Uldin, herself, or her mother. She needed him awake to scare him. As luck would have it, Edwin had the cursed item needed for her transformation into a werewolf. Her mother was assisting her in this plot. Fleur never intended to kill. She only wished to scare Uldin, perhaps to convince him to change his behavior. She assumed the form of a werewolf, Uldin's worst fear. She wore her mother's ring, perhaps to prove she had permission if found wandering at night. As you know, Fleur is fond of pranks and tricks. What better night than All Hallows Eve? I refuse to believe this. This is far too absurd. A werewolf has considerable strength, even more than a beast, but it doesn't make you impervious to all attacks. Terrified by such a horrible sight, Lynn did not hesitate to burn Floor with magic, and driven mad by the pain, she killed him by biting his throat. You may have believed she was taken by the fair folk. But this would explain why you were unable to find her, or even a glimpse of any trace of her. She was already dead. And how do you explain Fleur's letter, or the wooden effigy of her that appeared in her bed? I've already laid the evidence bare. There was more than one conspirator. Even taking the cursed item out of the equation, Salome was surely aware that there was a sedated monster in her house, and I strongly believe that she encouraged Fleur to this prank on her father. Oh my god, Salome. you've got so many lines right now. You're Salome gonna have to have something ready. To, from suspicion herself, and hid in the master chamber. At that point, Evan was looking for his stolen item. He broke down the door and found Fleur's body. I'm here. I'm brooding. How dare you! You have no idea how much Salome loved her daughter. She'd never abandon her like that. I wouldn't be so quick to discount the possibility. We found a chest made for Fleur in Salome's room. When Isley opened it, she suffered a horrific injury from a trap. Perhaps Salome had the trap for some time, and her target was Fleur. <gasps> dun dun! Inari remains silent, but her glare is penetrating and cold. Despite this, Ilona continues. She waited patiently until the manse was empty. After we escorted Edwin to the dungeon and gathered her in the town square, Salome was able to move again. She locked the wolf skin away in the chest in her room and trapped it with a device. Salome placed the statue in Fleur's bed to make it seem like she was spirited away by the fair folk. This statue fits the description of this receipt I found in Salome's room. Here. <gasps> Helona hands Inari the paper she found in the chest. Upon realizing that it explains the existence of the wooden statue of Fleur, she looks thoroughly displeased, nearly crumpling the document. I must have had some suspicion this plan was risky, so she wrote over a short letter. If she succeeded in her prank, all she had to do was destroy it. In fact, since the letter was still fa was found still sealed, I would suspect Salome encouraged Fleur to write it, to make Fleur's disappearance seem more credible. She placed it in the forest after her escape. Not only did Salome orchestrate this, oh dear, parasite, she suffered. She survived. <laughs> she suffered. Um, okay. <laughs> she survived. Anari crossed her arms and <laughs> Anari crosses her arms and her brows knit together as she takes in Alona's theory. Do you want me I to do Anari it. now? Or uh, sure, you could take Anari. <laughs> what, what were you doing for her voice? Angry. <laughs> You're forgetting something. You never explained what Edwin did in that room when she found the when he found the she wow when he found the burned body. If I were him, I'd hide rather than stay out of the open. Why was he holding the body in his arms? Ilona freezes, her legs shaking. The words are caught in her throat again. As she sees this, Anari chuckled to herself. You really are awful at keeping secrets. There's no need to talk. I can already tell just by looking at you. Alona's proposition is met with mumblings, grumblings, dissatisfied grunts, and a few voices of support from the townsfolk. However, it's all drowned out in the eyes and minds of both Alona and Anari. Alona is shivering, and the warm rays of sun accentuate the bags under her eyes, tired, broken, but still standing. 
Anari's posture remains unflinching, the totality of her being in complete focus. She asks the crowd to simmer down, uncharacteristically somber. There is now only one question that remains, and a clock tower that's ticking away endlessly. So where is she? Where is Salome? I can't tell you. I'm certain that my theory is correct, however. I do not care what happens next, Zanari. Whether you believe me or not is irrelevant. I've only tried to make sense of what I could from this tragedy. You cannot make me feel guilty for harboring Edwin as a werewolf. He is not defined by his curse, and I want you to see that. I have provided evidence and my theory, as you asked. Nothing I do now can change your mind. I accept it, regardless of the outcome. Sister, I would like to believe you more than anyone else, believe it or not. Why, however? Well, maybe I can tell you some other time, if we ever get a chance that is in your mind. You may be right. But unless you bring Salome to me, I will not be convinced. The righteousness that you preach is meaningless without tangible proof. So where is Salome? We've searched everywhere in this town for her, for her daughter. I can only speculate at this point. Are there any secret or hidden passages in Bellarov? That would be far too convenient, wouldn't it? You're right. Nothing will do. Nothing you do will change my mind. I have been burned by blindly trusting others in the past more times and in worse ways than you could ever imagine. If I am wrong, so be it. When my time comes, I'll gladly accept my penance. There's one thing that's certain. Your arrival in this town brought with it the destruction of this family. If it weren't for you and Edwin, this tragedy would have never happened. You're blaming us for being caught in a plot that we had no part in? You have done nothing but look for reasons to kill Edwin all along. For all I know, maybe you planned for this to happen, to usurp power in Belarov. Yeah, that, that, that crowd. Rah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> 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 I didn't know jo nuns could tell jokes, as if I would ever wish for such a thing. Teeth. You should learn to close, choose your words more wisely, sister. It's unbecoming of a holy woman. But I had the nagging suspicion you were a heretic from the moment I saw you. Someone like you could never win. At a Nari signal, two town guards move in on Iona, I, uh, uh, Alona and grip, uh, words. You got it. You got Alona this. and gri grip her arms tightly, drawing them behind her back. They bind Alona's hands together with a thick rope. Banana! Banana! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, man. Let me go. Ilona struggles and tries to shake the men off, but the guards do not relent. One grabs her hair and pulls it, the pain making Ilona wince in agony. As That's Edwin just rude. <laughs> As Not the hair, not the hair <laughs> As Edwin watches this, he knows he has to make a choice. He watches in horror as Ilona slowly but steadily bound, resist as she might. Edwin has seen enough. I can bind her. <laughs> the chains that contained him snap off as he transforms into a massive werewolf. He rushes at the guards with a growl and pries Alona away from them. His claws slice through the rope, freeing her. Anari strings her bow and takes an arrow from her quiver, training it on Edwin. I won't let you escape! Anari releases the bow string, and the arrow flies with a terrifying whistle. It grazes against Edwin's hide as he transforms from his werewolf form into the form of a gray wolf. He runs to tackle Inari, but she def deftly steps back from Edwin's attacks, her every moment, her every movement precise and intentional. Inari can predict his behavior easily. After all, he's only a beast, and a, and a sentimental one at that. Ilona quickly jumps onto Edwin, and he runs off towards the outskirts of Belarov we go that hand the gates will already be will be already closed by now there's a part of the wall that was hastily patched up you should be able to climb through there edwin shifts to his bipedal form he takes a running leap and embeds his claws into the ragged stone he shifts back into his half wolf form and starts climbing inari begins climbing the ladder of the clock tower her bow in hand and her quiver on her back when she reaches the top she pulls back the bowstring and takes aim at Edwin. The arrow embed. Why is there two? The arrow embeds in him are. 
The arrows embedded in him are a waste of her ammunition, and Ari goes for his true weak point, the burden at which the beast is carrying. Ooh. The arrows embedded in him are a waste of her... Oh, it's... Oh. Elona. Uh, Elona. You're shooting me? Shields Elona, clutching her close. Three arrows pierce his hide. He's taken worse beatings than, it, than this as a werewolf, so he grits his fangs and continues on. He will live. He has to. Where'd she go? However, he's not yeah. invincible. A few more pl well-placed shots and he's down. Inari knows that Alona is neither a werewolf nor invincible. If Alona falls, the beast will chase after her. Inari takes aim again, completely focused on her target. Stay with me. Come oh, that's me you. and the Edwin. Don't lose sight of our escape. I'll do my best to heal your wounds with... <laughs> One arrow inserts itself deep in, Alona, in Alona's shoulder blade. She writhes in agony. Despite this, Edwin still manages to hold on to her and continue forward. Inari pulls back her bow again, readying another volley. Two more arrows make their mark, impacting Alona's ribs. Alona's consciousness starts to slip, unable to bear the arrows embedded into her. Alona! No, I, I gotta get this voice. Come back to us, Edwin. Hold on, we're almost there! Time seems to move too slowly. How much more agony can they endure? Edwin grimaces past the pain of his substantiated wounds. There's no question about it. Elona knows Inari could never miss her mark, and that Edwin might have survived if he had escaped on his own. Elona considers Inari's motivation. Was she really telling the truth about not being interested in taking power in Barlov? Barlow? Yeah. What was the point of the trial she organized? One last glance at Inari leaves nothing more than the further questions about her intentions. But in her current state of mind, she can barely begin to consider what other questions to ask. One final arrow impales in Alona, shooting through, her, shooting through her cleanly through the abdomen. Shooting through her cleanly through the abdomen. Alona, no! Edwin is quick to react, and he heaves them both over the top of the wall, lifting her very carefully as she were, as she were an injured bird. That's a lot of blood. Yep. The wall is stained red with their blood. Despite this, they escape Balarov. Edwin marches on with Alona in his arms. It's too dangerous to be out in the open. They search for a place to rest as dusk awaits them with open arms. Alona heals the wound that pierced your Admonton. Ab Admonton? <laughs> Ad <laughs> Admonton through. The blood and the blood slows. However, the wound does not close completely. The other arrows stuck in them would prove more dangerous to deal with, with no surgical equipment to use. I'm gonna save. Edwin, set me down. You're more injured than I am. Alona, my darling. Darling? After I'm dying, but we need to discuss this choice of words. You know, raising a heart rate at this point is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> After the awkward exchange, Edwin gingerly sets Ilona down on the ground. He reverts to human form, his ears and face red. Ilona tries to heal what open wounds Edwin has, not saying a word. Yes, I've been... Oh, God damn it! Get in there. Come on. I've been waiting to call you that for so long. What a fool I was to keep what I felt about you hidden. The time I spent without you in that cell... It was excruciating, and that's when I realized how dark my soul truly was, and how much I need you by my side as the light. Ma, the exhaustion must be getting to you. So you weren't joking about wanting to meet, wanting me to meet their family. No, my brother Todd. He's great. Your brother Todd <laughs> is he an octopus? The octopus. <laughs> Thank you. It it means a lot to me. Could we rest for a while? I don't hear anyone pursuing us. Just for a moment, then. They walk for a while to search for a resting place, seeing the valley unfolding before them. Unfold before them. Ilona holds herself to Edwin's arms, and they walk laboriously? Yes, on the path. Yeah. Neither knew what lay before them. Haha, <laughs> moves. Cute. Yeah, cute. 
I'm sorry. I was brooding too much. Oh, uh, what? Oh, you said, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Because, you know. You're right about me not saying what it is. <laughs> You're right about me not saying what it is I want to say. Burying it so deep within the abyss of my soul that I oh, can't buddy. even reach it. <laughs> even if I want to, just maybe, if I'd come clean to the people we met thus far, and you two about the wolf skin, the incessant nightmares, incessant? Yeah. Nightmares that I've been having about my soul. I thought you'd dream about cats. Yeah. Yes, that's that's true as well. I couldn't trust you to watch me transform. It's okay. We can start over. How many arrows did they both take? I mean, he's a werewolf. I don't know how I I have healing magic. That's right. <laughs> if I had the courage to ask for your assistance, we could have found an alternative. We could have both had the zoomies. We must be strong and keep our past behind us. What's done is done. Besides, I'm here for you now, and you are for me. I'm sure that God has tested our resolve more than enough. I would like to believe that. Yes, but if we go to another town filled with crazy people, I am so done with God. My, my, my soul tells me that there's going to be nothing but more darkness ahead. Oh, I see. I think the sun might be rising, though. Eventually, they stop to sit underneath the shade of a tree, basking in its shadow. Their breath is ragged, but in sync with each other's. Ilona rests her head on Edwin's shoulders. Edwin and Ilona stay silent, each listening to the breathing of, e of the other. They both feared when they, they would only hear that. Ah, they both feared when they would only hear silence. The grievous wounds would prove. The grievous wounds would prove both of them. Prove the both. Ah, my mouth. <laughs> Well, I think we're almost at the end. You got this. The grievous wounds would prove to both of them that they were alive. Evil breeds evil indeed. Wherever I go, something always goes wrong. I'm Batman. <laughs> I've noticed I've noticed hints of it. Even in these past few days, mind you. That banquet was just all too much for someone like me to begin with. I used to I used to enjoy these things, but now I I know. It's okay. Everybody has something to hide. That fear only leads to mistrust and this violence. We were all alone, yet turning against each other. I know I'm in no position to say this, but I see the absurdity of it all now. There is no point in hiding. It does no good. Hard sometimes to be vulnerable, isn't it? To feel exposed? When you have no one you can trust, no one to confide in, and you cannot close this distance with others because you always second-guess intention. There's nothing worse than feeling alone in the world. Is that why Salome did what she did? I do not know, but I pity her because she does not have a burly wolf husband. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Edwin's breathing slow. Alona's too weary to use any more healing magic. They can't remove the ear arrows that have pierced them, or the two of them would surely bleed out and die. Izzy, are we gonna die? Probably. Um, dot, dot, dot. Edwin? <laughs> Kicking in their sleep. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Still open, Ed. Yes, love. I'm still here. What is it? Is it okay if I close my eyes for a while? I don't think I'm able to hold out any longer. You may. I'll keep watch so you can rest. I wonder what your family is like. The octopus? Yeah, Todd. It's a big family. They'll definitely welcome you. We're all werewolves. All of them? Oh, we share the same skin. That sounds really nice. It could scratch everybody's ears. Edwin watches the brilliance of the sky and clouds gradually darkening. With Alona by his side, he relishes- Aw, oh, where did- I, I hit the button. 
He relishes in the peace and comfort. Ilona, love. Do you need any? I just... I just wanted to say how much I owe you. You don't owe me anything. You're always thanking me. Ed? Edward. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Do you think you could hold me? I, I want to lie down. Holding each other. I thought you were already holding me too, but I think I'm dying, so I might have, of you know, losing I'll my lie down with awareness you. of the situation. We should be safe here. Thank you. Yeah. Lona lays Too her bad. head against she's Edward's like... chest. Sorry? <laughs> Too bad she's like dying. Yeah. Look how cute they are. Yeah, they're super yeah. cute. And he gently wraps his arms around her. He heaves a contented sigh, yet the arrows piercing him still dig into his weary body. Edwin thinks of the time they met, reading aloud pro poetry and ballads together. He strokes her hair, speaking softly in a murmur. He can feel his hands wet with the blood from her wounds. Should our journey end, so just it be. I am lost no more, I lay to rest. The sun bestows its blessings over me, while you wait beside. I flourish with the bountiful vendor. Vendor? The words are withering. In all certainty and all uncertainty we usher. I bid you know I love you. I, I, I love Zoomies. Aww. And you love Scooby Snack, too. Aww. Aww. They were good kids. This isn't the same voice cast, but like, <laughs> I'm sure this voice cast did, did great. <laughs> and, yeah, and much I... better than us. <laughs> Uh, so that was cute and great and sad and I don't know what happened <laughs> at the end. They are they dead? Are they dead? They're dead. Tell, are they dead? They're dead. Are they super dead? <laughs> I mean, nah. So like, here's what's gonna happen. All right, he's gonna give her the wolf skin. She's gonna turn into a werewolf, and they're just gonna go wreck the town together. That, and then they'll move on. They'll go find his family. Yeah. Yep. And Todd. Yeah. And Todd. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. That's uh, my ending. Yeah, they're dead until good. the sequel. Yep. I got a little confused. Like, I don't know that I fully followed Lauren Salome's plan. I'm not 100% sure I mean, what they were up to. It was still a great story. Yeah. Um, But... Yeah, I guess they got away. We'll, 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 maybe there'll be a sequel, and we'll get some of our questions answered. Oh, I didn't realize that her hand was... Oh, the, the yeah, background uh -huh. isn't fully... Whoops. Oh, well. There has to be a sequel. You can't just leave us like this. There's a sequel, right? There's a sequel? 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 You're in here. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, yeah, I am actually curious what the what the actual voice actors sound. Yeah, uh, they're, they're definitely not us. There, there's no <laughs> way that they were. I'm Batman. <laughs> oh, my big Rudy werewolf boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no way that they were us. Uh, but this was fun. Um, I think we're gonna try to do a couple more of these. Um, not today, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> But a couple more um, of these streams where we'll just play some of the other games that are that are really pretty and look pretty. Um, maybe next time I'll go and see if there's voice acting and actually hear people pronounce the names. So <laughs> I know what the names sound like. I apologize for how many times I butchered the names and how many times... like You could have made a, drunk, uh, a drinking game out of whether I was going to pronounce it Ilona, um, Rona, like... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> 
I forgive you. <laughs> I do not mind how you say my name. Uh, but that was great. That was great. Oh, um, the story left me wanting more. So that's that's a positive, right? Like, that's what we want. We want. We want people to want more story. So, yeah. 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 Good job, everybody. We I did, did enjoy I wish it. I did some kind of cool credit thing now. These are really cool credits. <laughs> we didn't have time for scrolling cre credits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we didn't have time for scrolling credits at all. No. No. Anyways, I think that's yeah. the end of the credits. <laughs> oh. We got more poetry. Oh, do we? Oh, hey. We are found praying deep in the dead of night. You have found your path. There's more. Praying still, no end in sight. A pure heart preserves, perseveres. You know, I'm good at reading. Praying, no desire, delight. A serene soul you see. Bring back those melancholy hearts. Cleanse these with your soul unbound. Out of sorts, but not far gone. With you, nothing lost is found. <gasps> is there more? What's happening? They're not bloody anymore. They're not bloody. Maybe maybe there's more. And that eye or patch they're... is really what makes everyone suspicious of you, friend. I'm just Or just... they're or they're in heaven now. I mean The eye patch is what gives you away, sir. Kind sir. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh... Mo is good. They're so dead. They're sweet. Yeah. I know we, we goofed up. I, I'm sorry that we were be also being so goofy, but like we have to. That's that's our brand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think not tomorrow. I was going to try to do one of these a week, but... Um, no, I, I don't think my voice can handle that. Uh, I mean, one of these a day. Uh, my voice can't handle that. So maybe one one a week, maybe two a week. I'll figure it out. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. And thank you to um, Wolfskin's Curse for giving us a wonderful game to show here. And thank you for everyone coming. We will you see it. you uh, another time uh, this week. <laughs> you... Sorry? Are you still there? Or did the internet go away again? The game page. You leave a comment. There you go. There it is. Did I die again? Perfect. Yeah. Anyway, it went away again. I dropped the link to the game page. You can drop a comment. Yeah. Drop a comment in there. Make sure to rate it if you can. Uh, this was wonderful. Yeah. We will see you next time when I figure out when I'm doing this again. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. And putting up with our zoomies. Yep. Uh, where is the thing to end this? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>